Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where you are tonight, but tonight we are in Harmontown. Let us waste no time in bringing up the stars, the mayor, the aldermen, the corrupt council people. First to the stage, the mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon. You know him, you love him. God bless him. Thank you. You also know him, Spencer Crittenden. If you don't know him, I don't know what you've been doing. Here he comes. <laughs> and, uh, are we going to bring up the most illustrious, most beautiful Steve Levy? No, let's leave him out there yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's let's the let name him sweat. Steve Levy. Uh, <laughs> welcome. You, welcome back to Harmontown. Thank you. Uh, we are back at our old home, but we are not violating any uh, permits that I know of because yeah. there's no audience. There's like 40 sewing machines out there with people at them. People don't know about this, but other than that, we're good. Right? So I thought, yeah, I thought, <laughs> right. I thought you know, it's, it wasn't really working in the VO booth. It could, we could go back there when we wanted to. It was um, more the tech kind of was more challenging at the booth, right? Because we have this whole kit and caboodle that we then have to fit into this tiny room that's also set up for its own recording stuff, we do right? Have, yeah, we do have so much more equipment than the booth can can make useful. And the equipment was used with subscriber money to try to make the show better for subscribers. They're the people that we really care about, even, right. though, yeah. even if there's a lot less of them. We love our free listeners, but... Um, we uh, we want to impress the subscribers, and and when we move to the booth, it's like even though those people you know probably are kind of irritated by the live audience sometimes, it's like eh, you know we we really miss that stage. So we figured it out. We figured it out. There's no more ingredients missing. No, no, this I, is it's, perfect. No, the audience <laughs> is uh, is is missing, and it's no. I I I wanted to do. Did you, ever, did you ever hear that Andrew Dice Clay tape, the day the laughter died? No, I, please. The, or like a Neil Hamburger thing, or yes. like 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 there's something there's something really fun and wrong and painful about like just this format performances, right? In in spaces where there's the, the glaringly missing thing is an audience <laughs> reacting. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I just wanted to see if that what like what that did to my energy and stuff. Um, so uh, I uh, but now there's no jealousy, which is great because there's always a little bit of jealousy between the people who live streamed and watched it, and those people who had to wait and then just listen to it. Yeah, who knows what relationship they had? Also, we found out our numbers were wrong. Like yeah. we, were, we were wrong. We, it we, turned we, out it was fake news. Yeah, what? We shouldn't have trust Steve's numbers when they came from Breitbart.com. <laughs> we started. Uh, yeah, we we shouldn't go to Earwolf uh, Earwolf's <laughs> news site for our uh, for our podcast numbers. Right. We thought we were tanking. Um, it turns out Ackerman's just on a warpath. Um, <laughs> he spent eight, eight hours golfing with the Japanese prime minister today. Uh, I still don't believe that hair is real, Ackerman. <laughs> We have beef. Um, is Ackerman still Earwolf? Or no. Is, okay. Yeah, and, but you know who is Earwolf? I think is maybe Brandon. But, but, well, don't you have an Earwolf podcast? I do, I do have. I had. I, I don't know if we got renewed or. What oh, the okay. Is, it we, was a seasonal. It's a really sore subject. Oh, I'm show. so sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, I I'm not. I'm not sorry. I was kidding. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Ackerman was still at Earwolf in a, a, a capacity because he has a couple shows, right? I think he does his own shows, and I think he might be like a consulting producer yeah. or something. But I don't think he's involved in the day to day that he used to be. Right. I think he was like one half step ahead of me in trying trying what I uh, have now tried which is like i kind of got into bed with feral and like mm. i was like like let me help this now we know the truth <laughs> what, what is the, po- truth? the podcasting industry <laughs> is the stakes are not high enough for any kind of satisfying competition uh don't worry we're all friends <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 just like it's a it's a i don't know if you call it a buyer's market or a seller's market but it's just sort of like you know, it's if you're podcasting, you're doing it for funsies. I yeah. think, unless yeah. you're like my favorite murder, yeah. or it's like every, every it's like a sea of uh, of 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 gold panners, <laughs> man. Oh. Uh, uh. See, this is where the audience would yeah. bail me out. That they'd be like, "Oh, I, I, the word gold reminds me of something." I'd be like, "Hey, fuck That's you guys for first. talking." <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, anyways, I don't want to talk about the podcasting industry except to say, if you have a podcast out there, we we we, we love you. Wish you luck. Uh, it's a great medium. I actually do have a great podcast recommend. It's, uh, um, 
in the in the vein of like, I mean, there's podcasts that you listen to because they're organic and anything can happen, and there's no preparation, so you might accidentally listen to two hours of a of a horrible windbag just like trying to find his way. Um, and <laughs> I can recommend some of those to you too. Oh, no, um, but uh, <laughs> there's all then there's the produced ones, you know, and I, I, among them are true crime ones. There's true crime ones that are sloppy. There's ones that are good and bad because of that. I, I just listened to the, is it uh, Crime City? That's the one that um, the guy that did the Jinx um, is doing, um, or or has done two years ago, and I'm just finding it now. <laughs> but um, uh, it's it's a really like super produced podcast series about um, Providence, Rhode Island, cool. which is like I, I didn't know it was like this super mobbed up town. It's like the third you know most mafia city after new york and chicago but it's like the tiny it's a tiny little i don't know no spent a little time there buddy cianci very corrupt politician it follow, it's a really interesting i mean they really why well, this is an amazing story because they are they, they're able to tell the story of providence rhode island and its relationship with crime through the shoes of its own mayor who 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 runs as a, an anti-corruption anti-crime republican yeah. candidate ends up taking democratic help from uh, uh the mob and, yeah. and it's, it's just great it's that thing of like how how dirty are you willing to get to clean up your town? So is it like a one one shot story? It's not like a like a. It's not like it is. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, th- I assume. Okay. I I don't know if it's like the wire. Like they'll finish the buddy, right. and then they do a different the story, and then they'll be like, also Providence had a problem with its water treatment plants, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone will go, <laughs> "Where's Stringer Bell?" Um, I have just listened to this podcast called uh, Crazy No Dirty John, and it's a similar. It's a six yeah, episode yeah. one shot true crime podcast that makes you hate old people. <laughs> That's what it did to me. Oh God! I mean, well, yeah. You, I, I bet that was. Uh, I, I listened to that. Oh D- boy. Dirty John was. Uh, yeah. Well, because the mom is subjecting her children to. That's the thing. Risk. It's like the the depths you must sink. Like I don't want to get too spoilery. That's the thing. But like the depths you have to sink to like do that to your family. It's like that's. But that's what I hate about old people. When you're doing it because you're lonely. It's, that still sucks, right? Yeah, no, I mean, well, I mean, I'm sure Donald Trump is lonely when he doesn't have money, right? right? And like, she was like, she was a, a victim of domestic abuse and bad relationships, it seems. So it's like she's, you know, she has like not like she's sick or whatever, but she's kind of in this cycle. So it's like not all, it's you know, it's, she's she needs help too, but it's still, I mean, you yeah. you gotta watch it, I, I or listen to it. I listened to it in one night. Um, yeah, you can listen to it on 1.5 speed without losing any quality. So do that. Yeah. If you if you had you listened to this one, uh, uh, up and vanished. No, this is guy, this kid that sounds like Chris Pratt, and for the first <laughs> the first episode is him explaining he doesn't know how to do a podcast, and then he calls his grandma for help. I, I just, it's a, it couldn't be more like if you if you if you wanted to create anti millennial <laughs> propaganda, it's like he's just like he's, he's just finding his way, and we can make fun of him because he, the guy's probably a billionaire now because it's like yeah. a hugely popular podcast. But he's just like, yeah, I really wanted to like, do a true crime podcast because I like listening to the. Them. And so then I I found myself yeah you know, I picked a case and then I was like wait doesn't my grandma live around there and then he calls her and the time and, and and then like they they talk about it for a while spoilers for the next five minutes if you're gonna listen to 900 episodes of it cover your ears I'll be really quick uh, goes through the thing um ju- ju- like just like basically um kind of just casts the same aspersions that the public's been casting on Reddit onto the usual suspects who you know helping drive that like you know shame onto their life and then a random dude comes forward and says I did it and then the rest of the podcast is him advertising a tour he's going on and doing interviews <laughs> with people about his podcast <laughs> and whether or not it helps <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, it's but, just like uh, the missing Richard Simmons podcast. Yeah, I mean it's it's better it's better for people. I'd rather live in a world where people just had access to sh- shit and we're just trying shit. I, w- like, I want to know what what are good numbers, what are bad numbers? Since we we know the numbers, we don't have to say your numbers. But it appeared that we lost eighty percent of our listenership. Good, good. It turned out that wasn't the case. It, the reason was is because we were looking at apparently someone started using a different tracker. For the for counting, I have no idea how this works, but in effect, well, they split yeah. the numbers down the middle, and we were looking at. It's half like of if the you hired well. someone to watch numbers, and then two <laughs> seconds into the job, you fired him, and then assumed that that was the numbers for the whole thing, <laughs> and it, it turned out you hired another guy, but you didn't know his numbers. <laughs> That's basically what happened. <laughs> 
But it was a good chance for us to realize we give zero fucks. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah that was the yeah. conclusion we drew. Is that I mean, we, we're well, not too yeah, bummed. But not, and not in a punitive, aggressive way for you. Like, obviously, I'm here, Chris and Bo-Ruff. I'm excited uh, mostly about you, and so is Chris Baruff, our director, and Zach, our audio guy. Like, we... We, 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 it's you that we really care about. I'm pointing at the camera for you shitty audio listeners. Sorry, I'll tell you guys later during a MeUndies commercial that I love you more than them. <laughs> but, uh, no, there's no acrimony here. This is the experiment that I wanted to do. I'm gesturing like a, you know, between me and the camera it's because working. it, because <laughs> I, I always, you know, it's just, it's just part of my like weird, can you monetize the internet hobby? The only answer so far being, you know, yeah, if you're, if you're if you're Mark if, Maron, if you if you're Mark Maron <laughs> <laughs> or porn, um, but I want yeah. Anyways, I'm not gonna bore you with that. I'm gonna bore you with other shit. Uh, so listen, you guys, uh, huge, huge mass shooting today. Yeah. Uh, don't be desensitized to it. I know you think the world record was broken. They've subdivided them into categories. Fox was all about. This is the biggest church shooting yeah. in 20 years. Just look. Yes, go numb. Don't go so numb you stop watching television about this. The <laughs> records are still bound to be broken. Um, the magazine industry for a while was just time, life, and then they had to fragment into Ninja Quarterly and stuff. <laughs> Let's look at church shootings. This yeah. was the biggest one in 20 years. And, oh, that Chelsea Handler, you naughty girl. You didn't wait long enough to say Republicans are bad. You're so naughty. It, that that hurt me. I hope it's clear I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> uh, it's it, crazy how people have paid attention to, uh, they know now the details before the news even really reports it. So they knew that he wasn't a Muslim. Right. They knew that he wasn't black. They knew that he that he was from the United States. That he was probably a member of the community because the news reported it like a shooter. Right. And just now, just saying a shooter makes everybody know. Fuck. It's funny. First of all, how that was noticeable, and it's funny. Second of all, how I was like, that, those are the details I wanted. Yeah. What color was he? Yep. What What is this about? Which of the Lord of the Rings factions, you know, is this in service of? There's no factions in Lord of the Rings. There's two factions. Uh, the Game of Thrones. I didn't want to say Game of Thrones. Uh, 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 mafia. Uh, Goodfellas. He's right. Uh, yeah, it's the, the, but but, but it's, like, it's like, 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 why do I want that information anyway? I wanted to, I, I want, as a church shooting, I was like, please don't let it be 26 black people shot right. by a white dude because, right. but not, but then again, that, that then your brain gets divided down the middle into, and now you're, now you've become like some weird, um, fucked up twin sociopath because neither of you has a soul anymore because one of you is still making calculations like, well, at least it was a white guy because if it wasn't, that would be even worse for some Rube Goldberg society machine. It's like, why? when did I get tricked into hoping different people were dead or alive in the first place, let alone yeah. what, what religion they are, what, what they were wearing on their head? Why am I hoping this is a redneck? Because I do think that the first thing you think is, I want to know who and why, because I want to know if I'm next. Yeah. So I think that's like a natural place to go. What you, uh, right. you, we, feel like we're, we feel like we're taking a temperature. We feel like these news stories that are, yeah. they feel like we're watching a, uh, like our country has the flu and we want to we know... It's like when I get too high and I start checking my pulse. It's okay. so stupid, but it's just a. It, it's just like, and, and even uh, one time I was at the emergency room because I thought I was having a heart attack in my twenties, and like the dude said, noticed that I kept checking my. He said, "Could you do me a favor? Stop doing that." Like, well, why? He's like, "Well, because you're pushing down in your carotid artery, so yeah. you're really yeah. fucking up the data. Like, and what? Who, yeah. What are you gonna do if you notice your pulse stops? You're gonna call a doctor? Yeah." <laughs> Right. Also, like you're not gonna pass out. I drove all the way to a clinic because I got too high. Jumped in the car, drove to a clinic, and was like, well, "I'm having a heart attack. I'm having a heart attack." And then right before I got to the car, I was like, "You don't have insurance, nigga." <laughs> <laughs> and that sobered me right the fuck back up. Uh, I yeah. You mean like that? You, your focus went off of your diet onto your finances. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. If even if you die, it's it's better than going in there and creating like a two thousand dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> on the way there, you're like, I gotta eat less uh, 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 lasagna. <sighs> All right, whatever. 
Um, but you're right. That is where we are. We are at this point where we hear bad news and we definitely break it down to its core so we can figure out whether or not we need to go get that go. And not only are we doing, but, but really it's like this guy who's sitting on his couch checking his pulse because he got too high, that guy isn't uh, prudent. He's not health conscious. He's not, um, he has no plan and he doesn't really even want to go to the hospital. On top yeah. of everything else, he's not even committed to hypochondria. <laughs> Because the reason he's going like this is because, but, you know, the alternative is you just go, well, I'll just go to the hospital just in case. Right. I'll just risk, you know, yeah. bankruptcy uh, yeah. or, you know, uh, I'll, 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 I'll put myself out there. I'll put more energy into something than my anxiety. But it's like, so we're just, we're in a hammock of anxiety right now. We got too high on, let's say, capitalism. Yes. I don't want, I don't, yes. uh, and, and now we're pushing down on our carotid artery with the fingers of xenophobia and white guilt and pushing and pushing and waiting for the right signal through those fingertips to do what? Something. Dig a bunker? What am I yeah, going to do? I think do? it's supposed to rationalize, and then you stop freaking out. Like, that's the hope. You're like, oh, it turns out he was a bad person. I'm a good person. I'm fine. I don't have to worry. You yeah. know, I think that's what's, quote unquote, supposed to happen, but it doesn't really work. Yeah, I think we're also hoping whatever the process is, it'll take four years. Right. And we, we did it. We're a quarter of the way there. Yeah, Um Because then we could just pull that lever so hard. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it also has something to do with the fact that, I don't know, I remember when those beheadings started back in the, I think it was even before, no, it was after 9-11, but, uh, you know, the old days, uh, oh, that brother. guy in the orange jumpsuit, he got his head cut off, I talked about it on the podcast before, I was like, yeah. I did, I haven't done it since, because fucking ISIS got way too good at cinematography, and I knew that I wasn't gonna, but it was like, when, it, back then, when, when radical, like, terrorist uh, groups were like, doing beheading videos it was always like all fucked up and like some weird fisher price pixel cam and they'd do some weird alpha mat on it to disguise their base but it would sort of be like a dude hovering in the in a cookie cutout or whatever and i always like like i would click on that stuff and it did have something to do with wanting to know i have no idea what data i would get from that stuff but something to do with coping with death because yeah what could be a worse nightmare than you're doing you're you're some civil engineer or something and you're overseas and you get pulled into a i mean it's that thing where you realize it could happen to anybody yeah and then you start we start coping with strangers deaths on the internet by going okay god damn it there's a reason this wouldn't be me there's a reason this yeah. right. or yeah. there's a reason why when this happens to me i'll know what to do or there's mm-hmm. a reason why um uh when it happens to me it won't hurt that much like i think that was part of i watch i watched a beheading video because i think i kind of wanted to know I wanted to see or hear some primate impulse that that made me go, oh, I, I bet it doesn't even hurt that bad after the first. What'd you decide? Uh, looks like it looks like it's bad. Looks like it's a yeah. bad way to go. Yeah, I don't even think they're using the right tools for the job. When well, yeah, their audio heading. was out of sync. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> they didn't even have a bounce sheet. But then ISIS started doing fucking iMovie, and it was like, this is so unsettling. Yeah. But they're little, like, they're, they're clearly, and they're like... I mean, even the name ISIS is so much cooler than the past Taliban, like, like the past terrorist names. Yeah. It's like the name that we used to put terrorist uh, organizations in yeah, movies. Yeah, literally, yeah. Also, it was Archer. Remember, Archer was battling yeah, it was ISIS. ISIS. I think they were ISIS. They were ISIS. I don't remember, I, actually. And I, have, uh, I, I had a bunch of Archer gear, because I'm a super, <laughs> super nerd. And <laughs> I can't like, wear any of that ISIS. shit, because it had ISIS all over. They ruined it. Yeah. Yeah, they fucked up Archer. Well, if you're in ISIS and you're watching, leave us alone. Your job has become so easy. Although I gotta say, we are really outpacing ISIS at this point. It's this. It feels like it's scarier to be in the United States than it would be in the Middle East at times. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's hectic. it's yeah. I don't know what the statistics are, but I know for sure we yeah, yeah. I do know that a kid stands a bigger chance of getting killed like in a poor neighborhood in America than they do in the Middle East. Has always been like one of those weird statistics. That Man. Well, you got it. Yep. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We I did always it. I, like, first. I, I get so one. terrified when I look at like Middle Eastern statistics and like low rent Eastern European countries because I know that uh, rich people look at those statistics or look at those facts and they, they go like, oh, well... <laughs> You know, like that. It's it's like well, it's like when you get a job and you're you don't like the job, so you like start like you're showing up late, and then your boss yells at you, and uh, uh, there's like a tinge of like oh no, but then 
you find <laughs> you keep finding your limits like in the it, it, and it's, it's like you know that like the the monopoly guys running things they look at us maybe i shouldn't say us maybe i should say you and like i'm just like a piece of privileged drift would like floating like slightly on top with Trey Parker or something, but 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 I, I I they look at the sea of taxpayers, voters, whatever the fuck they see us as, and they go, these people are so spoiled, they don't know how good they have it. Like in Czechoslovakia, they blah blah blah, and it was fine. And in in Iran, when a woman blah blah blah, the blah blah blah, and, and it's like you know that they're just go, they're looking at that with <laughs> cha ching. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. It's the what the market will bear idea of like, yeah, you know, make sure everybody gets a couple Gap sweaters. Don't take away their Gap sweaters. If you do that, they will riot. It's that idea of how much can you take before you really start to get upset. I feels, thought we had a much better threshold. Right now it feels like, damn, we can take an awful lot. Yeah, oh, I think dude, cell phones I think we, really changed it a lot. I think we could slide right into the fucking shitter, man. Like, like we, 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 we're not, we, 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 ain't, we, we, we ain't got nothing to, to fight with. I, I, I feel so vulnerable. I feel, I just like, I spent all weekend just, just like, like, just like, Playing Minecraft, you, you know, I was about to mime holding my lover, but really, let's be real, I was playing Minecraft, but then also holding my lover, um, and like, 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 just, it was, I just like filled with all of these like dude anxieties because of the church shooting. I like went, I was enjoying myself. I went to take a shit. I look at the phone. And Jesus fucking Christ, it never stops. I don't get a goddamn break from these yeah. people dying. Um, and then I'm like, I was just like, I just, felt, I just, I just, I just want to be able to protect. Cody, I just, I just, I, 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 but you can feel this very, like, dark, cold, monolithic thing setting in that is all numbness and comfort and fear. It's, it's, it, it where you, you, you can feel the fringes of your empathy, like, they're just like disintegrating, like, yeah. because the solution that we use to connect to each other, we have these tendrils in it. And and then if that solution is just acidified, then like the parts of us we're 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 not we all expect like this thing to be like some movie where people are turned into something, but it's like the first thing that happens is your your connections to each other are amputated. And for survival. Yeah, and and it doesn't even have to be a conspiracy on the part of any bad guys. It's just like this is what's happening to us. It's like necrotizing. Like we're going numb. We're 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 going cold, and we're like, so, and that gives way for me like bouts of euphoria because I think your system's shutting down. It's going like, well, my lungs don't matter that much, so now my brain has all this glucose left over yeah. to remember my mom. <laughs> uh, it, 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 like like a soldier in a World War II movie, you know, when they go like, it's cold, it's dark, and then they got like this smile on their face. They're like, get me a sheepdog, Tony. And it's like, I bet that's based on real shit because I bet when you're dying, like your brain just kind of pulls back and then has these like bursts of of like, yeah, but it's not that bad. Like, yeah. look at Super Mario Odyssey is awesome. You know, like I feel these waves of like, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, and it's because I'm dying. I'm dying like as a person who like ever thought they cared about other people or trusted them like i'm becoming an animal i'm becoming a person that just wants i do all i worry about now is like can i protect cody can i am, or the last moments of my life going to be spent failing her and so that's that's like part of the go get a gun white boy thing and then I don't know. It's like I assume the trajectory keeps going where pretty soon I'm pushing Cody out a window or something and going, <laughs> lots of nutrients in here. <laughs> because there's that, 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 that noose doesn't loosen. It's not like I'm finding out I care really. It's, it's, like, it's like I'm shrinking back, right? I'm just going like, well, I just want to be with my girlfriend. I just want to. I read a study that said uh, people act and think more conservatively when uh, they feel threatened. And Fox News is very dedicated to making people feel threatened every day of their lives. So it's kind of like it's this pipeline that's conservatizing people. One of the problems is for a while, researchers had basically no way to induce uh, liberalness or whatever. Because you can make someone be, feel more conservative or whatever, but you can't make them feel more liberal. But then they discovered recently that if you take them through a thought experiment where they suppose they're invincible and invulnerable and you know can't be stopped by bullets and stuff... 
then they get more liberal. So it's like feeling comfortable and safe makes you makes you more willing to share and kind of be be liberal, but feeling that you're going to be dying from terrorists and stuff makes you want to uh, get guns and ban illegals. So if you wanted to self-destruct a species, you know, that's the algorithm you'd use. You'd say, well, what's his kryptonite? Fear. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's not good. Lack. Like, right. like, uh, oh, so it's like when the where the people used to say, like, oh, the dog, dogs could smell fear. Like, well, I, he's going to have a real nose full here because he's growling at me. Right. What do you want me to do? Like, act like I'm not scared of your dog so he likes me? Um, it, it, and a classic example is this last weekend, like, I kind of fell for it, too, to the extent that I, I went through an hour-long rabbit hole kind of debunking it in my own head because it was like, there was this, you know, Refuse fascism organization, and they I, they got a full page ad in the New York Times, I think, and and then who knows what happened first? It doesn't really matter because the internet is an anonymous carnival of of fear and lust and 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 just the all everything that humanity had a chance to bloom into gets sheared off as it slides through the two inch diameter tube of the internet and we're all realizing that now all too late we're all realizing that silicon valley is cigarette companies like yep. for the mind that they, they're through no fault of their own they, they, they 20 through a years lot of later fault of their own. through a lot of fault of their <laughs> well own. they didn't i mean they weren't like philip morris going like research shows oh fuck it yeah they were yeah, yeah. They, were. they were like hey do you want to do something about these fake accounts no, that will mean we get less signups. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So, so no, I but, get what you're saying. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. So, so like it, it it's it, this thing happened where uh, I, 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 me, me trying to parse through this, even though I'll probably get details wrong. It's, cool. it, it's, it's like it's kind of it's not me trying to report to you. It's more me going. Let me get this straight. Is this what happened? I could be very wrong, but it seemed like what happened is that. Um, first, the, the maybe the right started going like, "What's this thing? What's this refuse fascism?" They got a page in the New York Times. They got uh, oh, and then this like this really lame ninety IQ um, <laughs> false flag flyers started going out. Where, but then it gets really confusing because the false flag flyers. You know, a false flag flyer would be like if you were white and you were scared of Black uh, Panthers, you would go, you would make something that said like, you know, uh, Huey P. Newton says, "Get a gun and go to Pershing Square tomorrow." You know, and like, but you're white and you're doing that because you you hate the Black Panthers. So, but then, but then it gets more complicated because I don't know if I've ever seen this before, but like, it's the internet, so flyers are free. You don't have to stop eating pizza to go wheat paste something on the wall. You can just keep fucking with shit, add a Pepe airbrush. This, yeah, it, it, it and 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 also. The the, you know Antifa knows that as well, so they're going round and round, and 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 it just turns into this swirl of there's just all these fake flyers where it says, "Hey Antifa, don't forget to wear your red baseball cap and polo shirt tomorrow, so that the cops think that it's Donald Trump supporters." Uh, who are attacking when when we start raping white women and then the it was just like and then the, like 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 people would troll and go like yes that's right we're gonna rape all the white women tomorrow we're gonna kill all the white people tomorrow don't forget and just like but you can't you can't tell who's doing that I went to like three Antifa you know Beverly Hills I was like that sounds funny like I was like, Antifa Beverly Hills fake you know like yeah. like 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 everything was fake everyone yeah. was faking someone else and everyone was like spreading disinformation and and so then the weekend happened and I was actually legitimately scared I thought you know I know a lot of this is fake but that doesn't I <laughs> all it all it took for that guy in Las Vegas to do what he did is apparently he had extra guns or something. I don't even... We still don't understand why he did what he did. But also, he was not dissuaded by the fact that it was a honky-tonk concert that no. it was a, with Jeff Davis's friend that he was shooting out instead of his original plan. So, like, like, we, we, so in that world, like, is, is there an ironic thing going on here where if you're not crazy but you are just filled with rage, at least you do have like a right brain aspect to it so you don't do things like the Boston Marathon thing? Because like, when you put those things together, don't you, aren't you just scared to leave the house now? Because you go like, well, everyone's yelling at each other so much on the internet. They're like saying, I'm going to kill you. Come get me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking kill you. I'll be there tomorrow. I'm the sharks. You're the jets. And like, but then like basically nothing happens. And then the next day, uh, 
it was just like I, I looked at the hashtag uh, that they were, you know, November 4th it begins or whatever. And it was, it was like essentially 100% just like people probably, I'm guessing, in not in California, like probably in... I'm not going to keep on bashing like red states like like as if everyone that lives in a red state is like some kind of yokel or or if even even if being yokel is a crime if you're a yokel that doesn't want everyone to die you're on my side. Yokel away. I told you not to bring up them yokels. Man. <laughs> I told you it's going to be trouble, can, man. Can, well, Don't it begs the question. Yokels, can you be <laughs> can you be an international yokel? <laughs> Must you be so localized in your yokeling? <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure there's people well, in those German pants are also yokel. <laughs> what, what happened to the cosmopolitan yokels? <laughs> Why so provincial all the time? Maybe that's uh, responsible for your yokelry. <laughs> maybe you need to, to, to get a passport. And I, maybe you'll still. Yeah. Yokelry sounds like an old iced tea slang word. Um, <laughs> obviously, no somebody like, 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 like that was just hating on locals, which means if, somebody, if you're hating on locals, then that means you're a transient. <laughs> So you're either a rock band or you're a comic. So someone, so, someone wanted to bash on whoever lived wherever they were, which they weren't going to be tomorrow, and they had to rhyme the word local. Yeah. Okay. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty unimaginative, Louis Anderson. I'm sure you made that up. No. Uh, all right. So, but, 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 so then it was, just, it was just a bunch of. You know, I, well, you know, it's probably fucking Russian AIs, but I yes. or or it was whatever. But like, it's people that you're picturing because you see the American flag emoji and the thing, and you see the you see the 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 little tiny itty bitty little thumbnail with a guy, and you think maybe it looks like he's kneeling over a boar carcass with a b- b- fucking blowgun, and uh, and 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 they're just they're just all patting themselves on the back and high fiving about how looks like they didn't show up. Yep. Which yeah. is crazy. So then, then it They're terrified winning. me because that means you can just we just invented the or didn't invent it, but that's a bunker buster. That's a societal bunker buster. I can now decide to take out any group by like if I if I hate Native Americans, you know what? Let's leave them for a while. The, 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 if I if, if if like if I hate like car mechanics, if I hate car mechanics, uh, I, so I could go home. And I could now just create a bunch of fake accounts and say, and, and, and not even fake accounts, it's too much work. Just make a flyer <laughs> that's it with a car mechanic logo, a Jiffy Lube uh, uh, workers union with a fist, and, and, and there's just a big knife with a, 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 across a woman's throat, and it, and it just says, don't forget tomorrow's rape day, Jiffy Lube style. And then I just send it out, send it out, and then, and then I go like, and then, and then like I send it out <laughs> on a million channels and go like, Guys, I'm really concerned about this. Is no one finding this stuff except for me? I mean, this is crazy. I can't believe this. Is, some shit's going down. You know that 20% of the of people are going to go, yeah, that's right, I'm doing that. And then another 20% of the people are going to go, yeah, I heard another thing at work. And then you just wait two days, and one of two things happens. The Jiffy Lube people are like, these people are trying to fucking kill us. Let's go kill them. Um, it, 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 or nothing happens, and it's a win-win, because you just and then you just go, oh, chicken, chicken, bok, bok. This is this is crazy. Yeah. I'm terrified about this. We're losing we're losing the meme war. <laughs> right. It's there's not I mean it's weird to talk about it like that, but there's not really another way to push it. I mean, I remember in 2004, 2008, like Republicans know how to message. They say, you know, we're going to call this free handouts, we're going to call this not taxing not tax cuts for the rich. And they've done that for more than 10 years, probably way longer. But they are so good at that. And then we, you know, and then so they've evolved and now their online discourse is all in service of this great dishonesty and it just works really well. And then on our side, we you know, we're shitting our pants and blaming each other and smearing the shit on the other person and saying, you're doing this to me. And like, it's not, we're losing the meme war. It's really bad news. You can't, any time you go on, and a big part of it's Russia bots, I'm sure. But anytime you go on Twitter, it's just like conservatives dominate the discourse when by all accounts, there's probably more liberals on Twitter than conservatives. This is the thing that's driving me crazy because having read Steve Silberman's book, we had him as a guest on the show, the only neurotypical that the autistic community says is allowed to to neurosplain for them because he spent years writing this big, thick book. It's a history of autism in America, or it's diagnosis, which starts in the 70s because they were still cattle prodding people back then. But the, the history of the autistic spectrum in the United States, it, it, it runs parallel to the history of the internet. It starts with ham radio. It, go, it goes through sci-fi culture and all this stuff because there, once upon a time, there were people who 
in situations of like a party um, where there's like real punch and Cheetos and like eye contact, they they they, they weren't like they, they they weren't they didn't have as much going up to the plate as they did at home on the ham radio or Morse code or these things. It's like the internet gets created on the backbone of of like the silent minority of like geniuses in our country people who who because they're smart and because as spock knows um it's more logical to just pick a lane in terms of whether you're good or evil and stick with that and then abide by logic within that lane um, and raise your eyebrow at the approach of how to you know, protect your species and things, but at least you've decided, yeah, but if, if a human gets in a fight with a shark, I'm not going to root for the shark because I'm not a crazy person. Right. The, those people, and yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean by those people. <laughs> the, those pe- who do you mean by those people? <laughs> those people gave us the internet, and, 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 it's, and you know, in there, like... 13-year-old Dan Harmon's like starting to talk to people for the first time on a monochromatic monitor and I, I get to lose my virginity at 16 which is something that never would have happened I don't think to, to, to this day if it weren't for the, these like internet chats combined with well let's get together in real life at the local Fuddruckers and let's like look at each other wear name tags and we can like sneak out to the car and try some stuff um, we can hack uh, our bodies um, by coming um, <laughs> with with anyone. That's actually normal operations. If you um, came fireworks, that would be a hack. That's a real hack. <laughs> and, if somebody uh, <laughs> gets herpes, that's a hack. <laughs> um, but and 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 so it was a place to hide. The internet was a place where smart people went to hide from their moms, from the 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 the, the, the laundromat. Uh, operator from, from people who couldn't understand complex thought from, from 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 people who let's let's even put it even more objectively and say from people whose IQs were distributed along different parts of uh, uh, different receptors and transmitters yeah. people who fare better at a party in a backyard in a trailer at the bar and on a snowmobile I, I just rattle off a bunch of things that you associate with right-wing people but i'm t- in a penthouse uh, 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 cocaine uh, orgy i don't i don't know what is a left-wing thing in a sushi bar i and a catwalk with david bowie uh <laughs> get him off the catwalk what's he doing he's going too far uh, you you kick David Bowie out of this uh, 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 catwalk. It's like a CK one commercial. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but but like so so then those the, the, and then MySpace and then Facebook and then your mom's on the internet and then your mom is the internet and then the, but at the same time so is your boss so is your wife so is your kids so is your job so is your job prospects. Uh, when I moved to LA, you still I, I still had, I went to Kinkos to produce my screenplays like so we could be shrub and I could hand them out at parties. Because we had email, but it's just not how you. It's like how you looked up old people, old friends, and like said, like, "Are you alive? This is crazy." Right. Um, now it's just like the internet is the real world. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. The, 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 the world that we're in right here is fake. Um, that's why there's no audience. The 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 the. the, the it, 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 and, and now it's the worst timing because we need the Hawkman and the Flash Gordon of the political spectrum, which is the, 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 the smart people, and they excelled at the internet because they never had those, those specific kind of like tendrils. So the, their logic was like where they were actually able to say, hi, my name's Tom. Like, I'm not that good at talking at the party, but... I now am good because I know where to point and click. Now, everyone's pointing and clicking. That hasn't changed Tom into a social butterfly. Right. And it hasn't made him empathic. Right. So now you have a black woman on Twitter saying, um, hey, uh, I'm mad about this, and we got to do this on Wednesday. And, and whose kids are these? we got to get our shit together. And then you have like this odd, well-intended white person going, um, well... <sighs> I don't think that pound for pound, there's any. I think technically what you're saying is as racist as saying this other thing. Thank you, Spock. 
Thank you so much. This is the exact right time for this. This is yeah. perfect. Mm, logic is exactly what we needed right now because uh, logic uh, uh, and it's great conveyors, uh, bullets, uh, tips of spears, arrows, fire set to your home. These things, these th things that don't involve understanding other people. Let's add to all of that. It worked 20 years ago. Now it doesn't. Your mom's on Facebook now. Yeah. She's an idiot. <laughs> She's being taught. Why we to. rap about her all the time. <laughs> your your mom thinks that headlines are truth. I yeah. almost do. I yeah. still can't quite get past it. There's an there's an instinctive thing where I see like a font type that's like bigger than other type underneath it, and a byline and a thing, and it's like designed in a way that looks like something that used to be called a newspaper. And I go ah newspaper, and then if and then I have to then go. Ah, fake newspaper. Uh, like, yeah. but, 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 like, your mom is like newspaper. Yeah. Like, like, she never even gets that far. Yeah. And then she just clicks forward to all her friends. They're terrified. Their porcelain birds are rattling. If forty-four-year-old ph philanthropist genius iconoclast Dan Harmon is cradling his girlfriend with his rippling biceps while his Iron Man Mark III suit is being assembled in the corner by Jarvis and I'm scared? Your mom is gone. Egon's gone bye-bye. Uh, like, 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 she's, she's just, she, it didn't matter if she started Democrat or fucking the, 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 like, like, like the, the, the Jill Stein voter. Your, your mom at this point is fucking like under the bed and she's, and, and we're we're doomed. Yeah. Sort of, sort of. One of the things that they are good at is the old everything sucks and here's how we're gonna fix it and everything sucks and here's how we're gonna fix it. And we are incredibly bad at we're fixing things. We don't have time to tell you what we're doing. If you look at when Obama left office, there everyone had to come to his aid afterwards to discuss the things that he had done in office. And the list is 500, 600 things long that he never talked about. There's this crazy thing that Democrats have where they practice the humility in order to get the job of charity done, and then they don't toot their own horn. So there's a ton of legislation that the right benefits from, but you never hear Democrats rub it in their face. Half you broke motherfuckers are on ACA. You're the people on heroin. You're the people laid off. You're the people that this program was set up for. The middle class is liberal. It's the poorest of the poor that needed ACA, that needs Planned Parenthood and all those projects, but you never hear the Democrats cut to the chase and say, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to just one person who gets $5 coffee. I'm talking to your broke ass who needs things like EDD and free college. Yeah. We don't toot our own horn because sometimes we're too busy actually doing the job. There's a little bit of hope and faith in there that says they'll, they'll figure out that we're the ones right. behind these great programs. And the, look, man. She, she never pushed her agenda. The current Democrats aren't pushing their agenda. Right now, the Democrats look like they're failing us. But the truth the, in the press, but the truth is we've stopped all these bans. We've stopped all this crazy ass behavior. There are incredible Democratic leaders. They happen to be female, which is why they're not getting any play. <laughs> then they happen to be African-American, Hispanic, and Asian. Gross. So I know, right? <laughs> Here's the thing, though. We do send you the people that you're thinking aren't going to be able to do the job. One of the great things that this party does is send in an old black woman to get some shit done because the Republicans think they can defeat her and they'll be asleep at it. So that's part of the problem is that it looks really dark, but on the ground, we sort of know we're out here. We're out here physically going door to door and figuring out how we can stop these people. We may not brag about it and we may not have a marketing budget, but the truth of the matter is there's been some heroes. There's probably a million of them. I mean, by definition, heroes are, they're just, they just end up getting suffocated. And they, they weren't, they weren't trying to breathe though. And I don't, I don't mean to be Morgan Freeman about it, but <laughs> <laughs> some of us knew that when we got on that burning ship that was, was headed towards the town, that it was going to go down with us on it. And we don't give a fuck about that. We don't mind that. There's nothing more hardcore, more ride or die about saying, I did this for the group and you can suck these balls. The dude who just did it for his family and ripped off a country so that his kids could have 100 million 50, 60, 70 years from now, that's not really a baller. 
That's not really a tough person. That's not a G. A G is when you're like, I'm fucking down a ride. I know this is going to get my head shot off. That's some Christmas addict shit where you're like, somebody got to start this motherfucking party. We have those people. We just don't talk about them. That's the thing is that I had to confront my cowardice and my comfort level being threatened when I was like, I was like, I'm not going to church went and took photos at the, you know, Pershing Square and stuff. I was like, I, somebody's going to set off a fucking lunchbox bomb or something. And, and it's like my therapist is going, that's OK. You're a pacifist. Is it if you find out you're a pacifist because baseball bats come out, you're a pussy <laughs> like, like, like that's it doesn't it's too late to find out you're a pacifist. It's not. It's when everyone finds out they're a pacifist. But it's like and she's like, look, you got to stop. You, you, you like because I was saying, like, for 20 years, I talked like Noam Chomsky, you know, read half of one of his books, and I'm like, so left of left of left of anarchist, and like, power to the people, and there's no such thing as race, it's just a division that's vertical, they're trying to distract you from the horizontal divisions, and we need to fucking, like, uh, uh, but really, it was a fucking dodge, because it was saying, uh, I was going like, hey, yeah, uh, re- red, red election, blue election. Uh, wake me up when politics gets real, because there's going to be people in the street beating the fuck out of each other. That's how you know when it's real. Bye bye. I'm gonna like, like I'm fucking like. I was such a dodge. I didn't know it, but it was. And, and it's like, they're, no, they're there, Dan. They're, they're tomorrow. P- people are gonna get like, f- as far as you know, you have a feeling someone's gonna get their brains beaten in. Um, something's going to blow up, something's going to get thrown, start on fire. You could be there with a blanket, put it out, help the person. You, you, you could be the person that they beat up because you look a little bigger than the lady next to you. You could, you could, you could just go there and walk the walk, like what you're talking about. Yeah, for the Black Lives Matter marches, what we wanted were white people around us. We wanted white people in the crowd because we knew, uh, ain't nobody going to get killed. When there's and we, when we love being a, ra- a ring of white people around a bunch of black people, when it means that the black people are going to come over and play Balderdash on Wednesday, and we can teach them what a what a fucking uh, trying to think of a, a mojito is. Uh, d- 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 <laughs> That's not white people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a white what a white cocktail is. Full menu. You got a full menu, full menu and you pick mojito. <laughs> I, I, I'd love I, to I, know about these suburban ch- enchilada. Is that what you white people call them, enchilada? <laughs> a, ch- a, ch- a Chandler's fizz. <laughs> I, had to, I had to make one up, but 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 like we don't want to. It's not not we don't we don't want to. That's the other thing on Twitter is like it's like white people standing next to black people. It's always the funniest thing when like black people are like like I I uh uh you know let's face it uh. God damn it! There was there was some exam. I screen grabbed it because I was like, "This is classic." There was like a woman uh, of color, if you believe Twitter avatars, saying like some, something like just it's, it's 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 she's just it's just she's just saying like you know uh, it's it's worse on us than it is on you, like like it, it, it's it's. You know, you, you liberals are all waking up to this idea, but it's it's, it's worse than yeah. And then just this this fucking flood. Not a Nazi in sight. Not a conservative in sight. Not a Pepe. No alt right needed. Just because the clot that floods to that wound was all liberal white people going like, going, now wait a minute. This is not what I signed up for yeah. when I decided to care about you people. Yeah. Like um, you, a little gratitude wouldn't hurt here. You know, they didn't say those things literally, but the way they, they express that is just logic, logic, logic. Logic, logic. They go. Uh, well, actually, I don't think that's true. I th- uh, it's you know, and it's like are, are, we can't give them this. Then where? Wh- wh- I, that's bad advertising for the revolution. They're like, yeah, hey, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. truth to power, do- down with the thing. Get the pitchforks of the church. Hey, uh, um, after we finish this, uh, uh, maybe we'll have a beer together. I, uh, I don't know, <laughs> man. Like, 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 it's like it's not a good time to. You want to yes and your throng, like like that's that's how Frankenstein's get chased. You know, everyone yeah. goes. Nobody nobody goes like kill the monster and Jews later. <laughs> kill the monster. That's a way to talk to a fellow monster killer. <laughs> you have to admit, Yoshi, you're you're pretty stereotypical. <laughs> I'm Japanese. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Uh, it's remember how fun it used to be to be dark 
Fuck no. Uh, I mean, Jealous but, but, for all my life. Tell I mean, me about it. As a, as a, oh, you mean cynical. Cynical. Oh, it sorry. It used to be like, fuck this fucking new taco shop. Yeah. And this fucking Gen taco X. shop is bullshit. David and, Cross generation, baby. Right. Janine Garofalo. Right. Flannel shirt, hands in the pockets. At look at the floor. I don't right. fucking care. Spin doctors don't look like Kiss because we're fucking real. That's right. It was a blast. You could talk shit. We don't shit wash our on, hair. You could, you could say, I don't like this juice. This juice isn't natural. I don't like this fucking wallpaper. I don't like this. I don't like that. If I've on. heard of it, it sucks. That's right. Good sign. You've never heard of this fucking band because they meet in an alley. And it's <laughs> only like four dudes and you, they don't even cut vinyl. Well, I'll listen to them while you're telling me about them. But if I find out someone told you about them, I'm fucking, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. Right. Yeah, they suck now because they make money at this shit. So we hate them. It used to be, we had a great run of that. And like you said, there was a ton of comics that came out of that era of being able to like really make fun of the world and where we were from a very elevated place. And now we don't want to be dark. Like if that's how you made your money, you're not really into like, don't think suck. You, I, I think it's, that's how hard it is. It's so hard. Well, it starts like, with shit. Muppet movies, frankly. It starts with shit like that where it's like, oh, you can't hate on the Muppets. Yeah. There's a there's a hip comedy person in that movie. Yeah. Like, come on, we all grew up on the Muppets. Right. It's always it's always infantilization. Like, oh, come on, Good Night Moon is the bomb. Yeah. Like, like I was like, the Good Night Moon movie brought to you by General Electric. We make cluster bombs. <laughs> we also bring good things to life. We'll tell you one of those two things during this production of Good Night Moon with Ted Danson as the Moon. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg as a starfish. <laughs> <laughs> and then, because you don't want to be on the side of bad shit, which the Republican right wing, the fear mongering side, the, right. the, uh, the, the Skeksis, uh, the Skeksis. They, 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 they have that advantage. They yep. detach themselves from Gestalt. They don't feel like. If they make the case that racism is okay in order to get what they want, that they don't worry about the like reverse Midas touch of, right. oh, I'm going to protect my daughter, make sure she can go to good schools by, um, by hitting these talking points. And these talking points... It's like it's almost like that. There's a, it, 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 that linguistics is where is where the atomic fission is. Is that liberals think words are magic? We think that if you say abracadabra and you really believe in it, if you believe you're invincible, if you believe that Tinkerbell can come back to life, then she can. But no one wants to risk anything. No one wants to run up on stage and bring Tinkerbell back to life. The Republicans get to go, Tinkerbell's already dead. Who thinks that we should hang that person for doing it? <laughs> right. And it's really easy to raise your hand. Yeah. Um, Demagoguery. I mean, it worked in Rome, right? Like, it's, it's a very tried and true tradition it's very effective and so it's like well what are you supposed to do when you're when 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 the, the how are you supposed to not become the thing you hate if the thing you hate is hating you can't that's what i think i mean we, i'm not saying join the hate but like i don't how do you beat demagoguery other than being more popular than a demagogue and being all this isn't actually being a demagogue lame and aren't i cool and isn't there parties here like i don't know there's not you can't be a spoil sport and say demagoguery sucks. This demagogue is is not cool because nobody wants to be told what to do. And if they, you know, it's like unless by a demagogue. But 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 the but okay, I'm I'm, 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 I'm I hit rock bottom. I'm coming back up. I'm not going to do this to you. And thank you for being here in in, <laughs> in, in, in in lieu of Duncan Trussell, who's like also like I put him in the same drawer as you. You're like you're guys that like you know. It's like what I'm doing is easy. It's like heavy and like I curl up in a ball, I suck my thumb and I sink to the bottom of the pool. And I associate that with like transformation, but I'm reliant on people. If you were down there going like, well, you're not going to fuck this shit. I, I would be like, the, 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 like we'd be dead. Like yeah. I'd be dead anyway. Cause like I, but you're up there going like, yeah, but come on, fucking float piece well, of shit. I know our numbers are bigger. <laughs> that's, that's the that's the thing. Is that I know that there's more of us trying to save the world. Than oh, I thought you meant the podcast numbers. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that I know that our numbers are bigger, yes. <laughs> but it, but but I do think I'm much I, more positive. I, I I think that the key is it's like if the question is how do you how do you beat hate if 
if you don't want to hate it, because if you hate it, you, you hate, and then hate, 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 and it spreads. And then we, we're all so sick of hearing about, you forgot the Rust Belt. You should be friendly to a hillbilly today on the internet. You should do, like, there's something in between there. My therapist was getting at, that, like, it, 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 it's like, we, we have to, we have to be ourselves even more than we thought you ever had to be. Like the definition of being honest, what, what we didn't realize that it was um, spoiled along with a, a, a sea of like badness that we could counter by, for instance, in the 90s culture going, yeah, but I don't want to buy Prell right. um, because it's got a logo. Right. Um, but, but like it was e- that easy to revolt back then. It's getting harder and harder and harder to revolt against hatred. It's becoming increasingly clear that that the only way we're ever going to beat it is with genuine love. And we are constantly running up against these moments, anecdotally, where we're the, the trolls aren't smart, but they because they're dumb and because we want to beat them and strangle them out of existence, we just keep finding out that we are full of more hate than we thought. And it's not like, it's like we have to actually learn how to love. We, and it doesn't mean like just see some grody piece of shit that you don't like being around and pretending that you like them or respect them. Politeness is a big problem right now, or it's, or it's, or it's rather it's, it's not a problem anymore because we've that market has crashed. But and we have bigger problems. If, yeah. if 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 we're living in the 1929 right now, the things leading to it that you lear- would be learning about in history culturally, one of the things would be politeness. Yeah. And, and I, I I'm sorry, but we were always like the road comics were always right about that. That the PC thing. It, it, I know that the bad guys right now are still harping on that, but the PC culture. Blah, blah, blah. We don't have the language to separate these things, but the truth is we started building a... We had a grain of sand in our oyster called, like, classism, and we started fucking swirling it around in our little mucus pouch and coating it with secretions of how do you do ma'am and nice to see you and yes I believe you're an equal and now we got a big fat grody pearl of this is a bad metaphor pearls it's a great are metaphor, incredibly though. valuable and very smooth great very valuable though but it's a pearl of very pearl. disruptive yeah. like it's, it's it's a pearl so big that the oyster has burst open what is yeah. the pearl it's uh it's 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 it's, it's the, the Ragnarok okay Right, because the grain of sand was classism, and it kind of just built and snowballed. It's the unspoken shit that we weren't dealing with in the first place. You know, we went from the 70s. I hate to, I hate to Gen X bully everybody, but Brandon and I will tell you, we had nailed it around 1979. As we crossed into the 1980s, we were just about to break dance our way into true equality. It's true. It was in all the papers. <laughs> Gangs were break dancing to settle their disputes. <laughs> <laughs> we had replaced shoelaces with Velcro. Oh, yeah. Um, it, 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 Michael Jackson had not yet been assailed by a conspiracy of liars. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> what what the, changed, though? Because we did kind of backslide, especially in TV and stuff, right? Didn't it represent, like, was it representation getting a lot better? And then just something happened and it kind of just got set back 20 years? Like, what happened? I don't know. We Commerce went from- is what happened. We had Wall Street crashes. People were pitted against one another that had never been pitted against one another before. Right. So at one point in America, you did have you did have people starting to equalize and sort of make money regardless of who you were. Everybody was on the up, and then we broke some deals that we had, which were we weren't going to lay off the people in the middle of the country. We weren't going to do that to the manufacturing base. We were going to help those people learn computers. We were going to help those people learn automation. We weren't going to break unions, and we weren't going to take your house from you. We broke those three deals which made the average American suddenly be very poor, and then they were ripe for the picking. We started a war on the poor in the 80s. We decided to do that. We decided to deregulate. We decided to economically. It starts with economic policy, tax breaks. You know, in order to do this, we're going to need to have the government not do as much. Okay, well, let's make, let's, let's, let's just, let's just, have a war on the poor. Well, right. there's a lot more of them than there are of us. Are there? Right. When you divide them up by every little tiny itty bitty thing that you can divide them by, uh, are there really more of them? No. They'll they'll let, let's get them 
back away from Archie Bunker where people are talking about the shit and let's let's go right into Knight Rider where the black guy is talking in rhymes while he fixes his kit between adventures and <laughs> it, I, I, it's not a deliberate I'm sorry if, if Glenn Larson is watching and he's like god damn it that was a progressive choice <laughs> They wanted that to be a big titted woman, and I fucking moved society forward. <laughs> I'm sorry, Glenn Larson. I'm not. I, 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 I'm sure that's true, and I'm not saying. I'm just saying, like, it's kind of. It's about the ethos. It's like you see that happening on TV. That's the only thing I know about society. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Also, it's an ongoing war. So what you what we're paying attention to right now is the viciousness that is coming in, but we're not really paying attention to how many years we have successfully held them back. So if you're looking at it from, I have to always remind myself from a civil rights perspective, we did a great job after the 70s. And we were able to hold these very evil forces back through the 70s, through the 80s, and then it got dicey in the 90s. And now we're not all the way back, but we have lost a battleground. We had racism as a thing that we had figured out to be, you should be ashamed of. That actually right. took a lot of doing. Yep. You and I were both born after that transaction occurred yes like 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 so we don't even understand what it might be like to be in like 1961 and be like like well yeah but black people are like different and like hating them is how i pay my rent you know like 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 a like a, a, a good person might be like yes feeling that way like we don't understand how that concept works because we were born into a world where he, we had decided at some summit called the fucking work of all of the civil rights movement that okay racism is officially bad the villains have shown their true colors we know how this works um here we go welcome children of the 70s to the dawn of the age of aquarius racism is bad and then we we're like racism is bad Which racism is bad and then our neighbor didn't return our lawnmower and I'm like that guy's racist <laughs> right. I, or like it, it just got too comfortable like the like it got it, it's like racism got so bad uh, so, so we agreed that racism was bad to the point where idiots hateful idiots terrible lynch mob oriented authoritarianistic sheeple if you will red pillars even uh uh could just know that racism was bad and just write a letter to tv guide and call them racist when they wanted tv guide to change the way they did things and then that also coincides with that population suddenly gets money they've been monetized since world war ii they're able to spend we realize as a country that we can actually make money off of these people so that being racist becomes inefficient and then that also coincides with women also becoming wealthier so what what they do at the top is they sort of go look i don't have to just underpay you i could underpay your wife too and they begin to split us and neither one of us are doing better. And what do you guys got kids? Whoa, right. what, what'd you do that for? Exactly. Why are you going to make another American for? You fucking gross people. Right. Like, oh, what do you mean? Where are you going? You going to get an abortion? Whoa, 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 I never said you could do that. They criminalize being a woman, which is the same tactic that they used with Mexicans and Asians and blacks. Which Criminalizing is a woman is a great way to criminalize being poor. Right. I, as I, like, like you, you're, if you criminalize the, the woman in every family, the poor families are going to crumble That's before right. the families that can get a nanny. Right. God damn it, we figured it out. But <laughs> the good news is they left a bunch of holes in this recent attack, which is that because it's based on policy and because it's based on the sweeping legislation, what we can do is on a grassroots effort, hand to hand, talk to one another, no internet, just talk to your neighbor, get involved, do those things, and they won't see that. One of the things that I always say is when I was working for Planned Parenthood, volunteering in the neighborhoods, I never bumped into a Republican. That's how I know we can succeed. Is and it's like on forensic files, they go like they, they always use whenever they don't have DNA or thumbprints or anything or or, you know, it's like ge geographic forensics always yeah. like they're like criminals are lazy. Everyone's yep. lazy, not criminals. People are lazy. Criminals are people. Yeah. If you were going to rob someone, how far from your house would you go? And they're like, oh, these are the three houses that were robbed. They ring a doorbell. You're under arrest. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they always said. If you want to find your mistress, if, if you're a wife and you want to find your husband's mistress, just take a walk up the block. Yeah. Because men are fucking lazy and they're not going to go that far. <laughs> yeah. Well, get, yeah. Go, 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 Google his office and then look what hotel is. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 but, but it's, it's, yeah, so laziness, that, yeah, yeah, hatred appeals to you by saying you won't have to, uh, do much. And so that's the thing is like, I haven't pierced that membrane where it's like true, something about love makes you like, 
it's like the way that I feel about Cody feeling that about strangers is the that's the solution. It's the it's the way that we could beat them. We don't need you to do that. Well, I, I, don't, I mean, I do, I, don't, I don't need you to rub your toes on my nipple and cook, call me daddy. But the, it's it's all gonna come out in her TBS show anyway. So get used to it now. Call me daddy on TBS. <laughs> At least my fucked up shit's up here. It's gonna be me and Elijah Wood left with everybody. I don't know. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to figure out who the last uh, straight white guy's gonna be. That's like standing side by side with me. That's all of male Hollywood. And I was like, is it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> yeah. I think Jerry O'Connell. That's hilarious. Because he seems, but he seems like a nice guy. Is not cutting it anymore. Like no. we we had a conversation at my friend's my neighbor's house. He's a great guy. Uh, uh, and we, we, I think I imagine this conversation is going all on all over LA. Everybody pops open a beer, and then everyone starts going like, "Well, uh, who's next? Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 who do you think? And who, who's last? And who's things? And like the uh, anecdotes that are coming out at these fireside chats yep. among Hollywood elites yeah. is, are it's pretty amazing, and yet not amazing at all. Because here's the thing. Like, I don't incriminate myself by saying this because I never worked anywhere near him, but really, if you worked in Los Angeles, you knew everything that we learned about Kevin Spacey. Like, like, yes. like and I'm not saying that to further vilify right. him and, like, high road anybody. I'm saying that to self-account and say, like, this stuff that is coming to light is stuff that I think the, the biggest... Uh, the it, it's it's it, it occurring increasingly to me that actually this has been a Hollywood problem and it's it's rooted in a gender problem it's it's a magnification of the gender problem where the Hollywood problem is which is we we this is about labor abuse in Hollywood this is about prostitution it's it's, it's a it's about the fact that Hollywood has had a free pass as a workplace it, it has not um, bound itself to the same laws. As, as Jiffy Lube, which is crazy because the guy at Jiffy Lube has to be very careful what he says to Brenda from marketing in the copy room, um, even though he's covered in oil, like, yeah. like, and I'm not. And it's like, I, we're, we're, we're privy to more fucked up shit. If you knew the stories at Jiffy Lube, you'd be like, I don't want that guy changing my oil. Right, <laughs> right. right. And, it's, and it's not because we had a double standard. It's because... Everyone currently in Hollywood comes here as a pilgrim of fantasy and wonderment. Everyone has read the stories and the biographies of their favorite people. They've picked sides. They've decided, well, I'm not a this guy fan. I'm a this guy fan. And I hope to be like this guy one day. So I'm going to emulate him or her. And we're so focused. It's a community of workaholics. Uh, and, 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 and every young squire that comes out is a workaholic is saying like, Hey, can you abuse me? Because I want to be Dolly Parton one day. I want to be Otto Preminger. I want to be, I want to run Hollywood. I want to work for a, a, it's it's like everything's so focused on the work that we, we are indoctrinated into a society that says, and then plus all that fucked up shit happens at the rap party. <laughs> right. And we don't treat it the same way you would at a Christmas party for your right. for your tax company. Right. And it's kind of natural because it's like we are making a movie. It's not like we're we're selling paper reams at like Scranton or whatever. Like like it's going to be this thing that we we all have to do and then it'll be over, you know? Like you kind of get sucked into this. It's like a tour kind of thing or we'll just we'll just make it happen. I guess it is kind of it feels different, I guess, than just if it's like, yeah, if it's Brenda from accounting or something. Yeah. It's also, just like, Brenda from accounting's never gone through a casting process. That's part of oh, our problem. Oh, yeah, for is sure. That the very nature of our business is is beef is and market. cattle and the way you look and and the way you look on film. Well, so, you didn't you didn't talk right to that person at that party. Right. Every every story you hear about your favorite people, no matter how pristine they are, all of those stories, if you really break them down, you hear the story of uh, uh, this is how Barbara Streisand got her big break. It it's it's not she lifted a rock and threw it at a lion that was attacking uh, right. <laughs> um, right. Uh, D- D- B- Bud Friedman. I don't know. It's, I, I, I'll look it up later. Um, the it's 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 a conversation. It's like a it's a, a, qu- a quippy one liner. Yeah. It's and that that is that makes it like there's no oil to change in between those conversations where you can go, hey, you suck at changing oil, or your your jiffy lubes are are 
not showing a profit. It's like, no, you're, these movies are great. And then this studio is doing great. And like all these people are yeah. either getting famous or not famous based on legends of how charismatic they were. And if you already don't have a, a, a society based on reason and respect and right. then there's an industry based on charisma. Right. I, it shouldn't shock us to be realizing that there's a lot of potato bugs under that rock. Yeah. You cannot hold these, uh, these huge rooms full of 20 somethings and then have a bunch of men making decisions based on that and expect that to work out. And it's not just sexual. It's like, like how many, you know, it's like, it, like, like I, the, the fucking, the, God damn, it's weird how people talk to each other sometimes. Yeah. Like, like casting director's assistants talking to someone who's dropping off a package, it's even weird. Like if yeah. you, you would witness it and go like, that was a little odd. Yeah. Um, but it's not like we're all out here being mean to each other either. It's like you're either that or you're like this p- paladin that's like all gleaming and charming and whatever. I'm what beating we, a dead horse. but What would be awesome is if we had men turning in men, which men should do because men who abuse women – abuse men so if we would actually weed these people out it, it would go a lot farther than waiting for 15 women to actually have to take this guy down it yeah. would go something like this and i pull out this little <laughs> list just go, alan so alda <laughs> and that's the thing is that people say did you know in hollywood about these guys and the truth of the matter is yeah we we all know not just in hollywood you know if you work at a jiffy lube if you work at a mcdonald's wherever you work you know the dude that's standing next to you that's being a jerk it's just that we're we're not manning up, and that is the definition of manning up. Because yeah. you you don't want to be a pack of dogs, and you bring back a wolf, and then the wolf come in and bite the other dog. You should have killed that wolf. Yeah, it's like it's it it, it, it feels like prison or mafia culture too, though. Where you're like, because I'm listening to this that that Providence, Rhode Island podcast, and it's like there's a lot of guys with like these really sexy Rhode Island accents. That even the fucking guy that's hosting the show is like they sound manlier than me because it's like. I don't know, they just sound like, they sound like this, and they, I don't know, I'm trying to do it, and they sound, cara, like, sound cara, like I have a cold. Cara. That's how they sounded to me, it was, cara, 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 <laughs> cara, like, cara, what, cara. what are you going to do, you get it, you know, it's just the way it was, it's like, you get it, you know, I got a guy, he's got a problem, he's like, I got a bigger problem, you know, you take care of the problem, and it's like, it's like, guys are like, like, oh, it's like, we're really, like, susceptible to that, it's like, we, we go like, um, uh, oh, oh, so, I don't want to be on the wrong side of that, not because we're, not necessarily because we're like, oh, uh, I'm like Dobby in uh, Harry Potter. I, I, I'm born to serve. It's like, it's actually the other part of you. It's the alpha part of you, I think, that, that has the train coupling for that. Because you go, oh, that's, that sounds refreshing, a society that is built on, on callous hands and, and horse sense. Right. Because I just think about the times when I had a conversation with anybody, strangers in bars, grandfathers, who, who were mar- Marines and, uh, and like, uh, 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 or listening to, you know, watching movies about these guys. It's like, th- there's, this, there's this boner you get filled with. It, 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 it's a heart boner. It's like, uh, it's a, like, like where you go like, oh, yeah, uh, that's the... That's a man, and I, yeah. I don't. It's like, I'm, it's like I'm just saying cliches, but it's like it's it's important to realize that too. That it's like it's a part of a. It's not it's it's not like uh, you're a you're a beta if you're afraid of an alpha. You actually more have to own the little alpha inside your beta. Because being a if you were truly committed to being a beta, I think you know. Okay, let's all be betas. In other words, let's think of the other person first. Yeah. Uh, it's the little baby alpha in you. It's the, the that 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 chimpanzee that's like. I'm a beta because I can't afford to be an alpha right now. Right. But that guy really, he, I really like the, the cut of his jib. He really gets shit done. I love that. You see how he just reached out and just grabbed that problem and just yeah. shoved it yeah. into a car? <laughs> right. Just cut its head off with a <laughs> right. table saw and just dabbed his lips with a napkin. I don't know how manhood works. I'm making it up. <laughs> I can't, I can't riff manhood. A tropes. real man dabs his lips with a napkin. <laughs> and calls, calls it a napkin. That's my favorite part. <laughs> well, Pat, Pat, Pat Oswald has this. Did, did you see his comedy special? Yes, of course. Um, he tells the story about the, the power lifter guy. Yes. And, um, and then the guy coming up and they're just like, Pat Oswald is, you know, the, the, Pat Oswald is how I picture myself when I'm 
thinking and talking. So like, if you're ever uh, like, like that's it, it, like that's my that's that's my inner yeah, that's comforting. my avatar. But he's telling a story. Like we know that Patton Oswalt doesn't want to hurt anybody, but he's telling this story about this time he saw this one guy lift another guy and drop him, and he exploded into blood. <laughs> and then the guy went back to his friends as if he hadn't done anything. And it's like. Like there's something eerie about the compatibility there. Like we, I, I, I'll speak for myself. Like I, I'm just like, yeah. I at the end of the day, the reason why I would punch a Nazi or run from one has everything to do with what I think a man is supposed to do. It doesn't even. It's like the reason why I'm anti-fascist more than I'm a scared of communism is because my grandpa's lied about their age to go into the Marines and fight fascism. And I yeah. feel embarrassed in front of their ghosts because I never helped them lay cement in the driveway. I was like, I'm going to go. I got, I think I got homework. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's not, you know, the deal. Manhood comes in so many different ways, but none of them are violent. That's what a dumb person does. There, there is nothing to do with being a man that is using your fists to hurt another person. Well, right, like the black guy in that story just lifts the other guy up and drops him. And he right. explodes like a tarantula. And he also did something that got the guy away. He didn't stand and engage right. the dude and box the dude and wrestle the dude. He picked him up, showed him his strength, and he dropped him and he walked away. <laughs> that, that is awful. But he did try what a man is supposed to do, really, what a man is supposed to do. is supposed to have a command of English that lets the other man know, I'm not interested in fighting you. I'm not going to be no bitch. <laughs> but I'm also not interested in fighting you because what a man understands is that there's women there's people around they're going to be scarred by whatever you're about to do the two of you and you don't want to do that to people like it, it's not manly to fight it's manly to figure out a way to get the fuck up out of there so you can get back to your sixty, seventy thousand dollar a year job you're a man <laughs> go to work file the papers do the surgery don't be out in the streets like gladiators we've we luckily have evolved to a point where you never have to hit another man you never have to hit one you can get in your car you can drive off and when cops show up because they're armed men whose job it is to suppress shit like that they will ask you what the fuck were you thinking don't strike another man you're a grown ass man they're not going to side with you no, no one is ever going to look at you and go, I'm so glad you punched that Nazi. And if they are, they're not right, dude. That's not a man. A man figures out a way to buy the Nazi's house, flood his bathroom. <laughs> 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 you, you don't want to be the man that, that is fist to cuffing it. You want to be the man that's like, ha motherfucker. No, more, only, no yeah. more Matt for you. And we're only asking, <laughs> I'm only asking these questions because of, to bring it back to the other thing, the internet thing, it's like we were also raised in a culture where information will set us free, where the bad guys are zip-lipped and they don't like communication and that they do their work in the darkness and the good guys shine spotlights and they go in the 80s movies the nerd who takes power always does it by going like can i get everyone's attention <laughs> um i'm a nerd and I, I just wore a mask to trick a woman into letting her eat me out so let's put a pin in that the the that movie's problematic the, the, but but the 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 the, the I, I it's all every single movie like that from the 80s it all there's always the scene where the cafeteria's attention is directed and, for, and forget about like the teeny teenage culture it's even also just like every hero myth that we have so far was always about we got to get the word out Oh, look, look out the window. Look, all the people, they got the word. Right. Or the tape plays, and then the, 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 you hear the wiretap of the senator going, you think I care about these animal people? <laughs> and, and everyone goes like, wow, I heard the truth. The movie's over. <laughs> right. No what more lies. Do? Wow, those lies were building up for 90 <laughs> minutes and 20 years. Now, enter an era where you no more lies. I heard it over the loudspeaker going home. And now we're just like, every morning we get up and we're like, uh, right. Stop with the truth and the lie, truth and the truth lies and the and the like like, like it doesn't. That, that, so now what? Now we're all thinking about punching people because I, I like 
it ain't no muckraking going on. If you if you if you like prove that baloney's made sloppy now, no one's gonna give you a Pulitzer. Maybe they will, but maybe the Pulitzer people have their shit together. I have to say, it just doesn't feel like a recourse to heroism anymore. Yeah. To go like, aha, look, look how dark the world is. I found some darkness over in this corner with my flashlight. Everyone's gonna go like, no shit. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what used to be. Why don't you conserve those batteries? It used to be fun. You'd be cynical and you were pointing out shit that was really interesting because it was dark. And now, no. Now, we don't want to, we don't want to see that darkness. We're dealing with our own darkness. Fuck. All right. But, but, but But we got this. But we're going to learn how to love. We we are going to learn how to love. love. And, 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 and I'm going to love people. Like, it's easier, like, like by loving myself and like not yeah. thinking of myself as like the end all be all of things. That's like my, my therapist is like all this drama. Like, oh, you were an anarchist and now you're a pussy, and like, 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 like it all has to do with you. It's like it yeah, doesn't. It's too hard. It's like, like you're too. You, it's just like be other people. Yeah, just like 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 feel you're an obscure person. You're just a regular guy. Like 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 you're going through changes. Society's going through changes. You're moving along with it. Like you don't have to like have. You don't have to be the best at something and the worst at something, and this doesn't have to represent everything. It's like you're just a dude, just yeah. like fucking. And now the challenge is don't use that as an excuse to like avoid processing. Like now you have to go, I'm afraid of this. I like this. This makes me sad. This makes me angry. Um, I could be wrong. I was wrong yesterday, blah, blah, blah. And it's like kind of a challenge to it's narcissists. It's a trip because. It- Facebook was a great friend that showed up and had a bunch of stories to tell and it got really cool. And then as we all built it up and Twitter is the same, as we all built it up and gave it all this information so that it could love us more, we discovered that it became bipolar. And now when you listen to your old friend Twitter, your old friend Facebook, they're really only focusing on the roughest of the rough. And that is not reality. I took a week off. I didn't, didn't log in, didn't clock in, didn't use my laptop for anything other than writing. And the world... Did not change. <laughs> Nothing happened. My brain got better. I, I, I started to see more shit out there. But that's part of the problem is that that new TV of the laptop is, and the computer has sort of got you able to see the bad that you wouldn't have seen before. And it's not that bad. It's really not that. I know it looks and sounds so scary when you, when you look at it. But the truth of the matter is kids are still going to school safely every morning. Doctors are still saving lives in surgery. Puerto Rico's fucked up. <laughs> but for the most part, America still has like it still has itself. Don't normalize. I'm not normalizing. You at all. black people are always right. normalizing. <laughs> well, that's one of the things. Fuck. Is like, yeah, if you were, if you're black, just you've been on the, all of it. You've been on the shit for like four years. We've been inundated with lynchings and shootings and hanging. And what you, re- what for a second, you really had to be like, good God, if I walk outside of my house, I'm gonna get murdered. The truth of the matter is, they they're hyping you, man. They're trying to make you feel like there are more police shootings than ever. They're trying to make you feel like there's all this other shit going down. And it's, it's, there's not. And if there is, it's because, like you said, we're in the middle of sort of a change. And it looks a little rough right now. But it's, it's not l- like what we're looking at. But those mass shooting statistics are they're spiking, right? Like there's a, I don't oh. know about spiking. They're, they're going up. But there's been a, the thing is, more like, people it's, to it's shoot. not mass shootings, though. It's, it's, it's regular-sized shootings that kill most of the people. Right. Like, I mean, there's, I, there's, there's a, a shooting with about four-plus four, four plus victims every single week and has been basically for two years or something. Like, those, that's what adds up, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a mass tragedy is a mass tragedy. But, like, at the end of the day, if you're talking about loss of life, it's not just right. mass shootings that we have to worry about. It's, you know, car accidents and mass shootings and heart attacks. And right. Health care. All right. How long have I been indulging myself? Hour 20. Oh, Hour Jesus. All right. Uh, let's do one rap because I want to do one without the Fuck audience. Yeah. Is there a beat? Can I get a beat? I was thinking with the. Now, 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 you just do this while I while I talk. Don't don't let anything <laughs> I say distract you from beat picking. But but uh, I was thinking like uh, like beat picking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an, an advantage of the uh, of the of the, you, of the of the no audience laugh. format could be I, that. Sorry. Could, oh, we 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 did. Uh, I could put headphones on. We're not going to do that this week. I could put headphones on and hear the beat. You could do it too. Like we hear the metronome. We hear the beat, but then we rap into the live stream and then 
somebody out there, like these guys are really Make good at like they music. take the stuff and then they can oh. add music and they'd have cleaner audio. I hear what you're saying. I did a thing. I did the thing at the top of last week's podcast of the booth. That was I, I just did. The, I just riffed this like uh, Harmon Town thing, and uh, and and this audio engineer Harry, like he uh, he he added like all this. He, he like produced it, and it was like fuck, it sounds fucking amazing. It's like I don't know how he put me on tempo, and like uh, we didn't start with it because it's like. It's very gospel, and there was a horrible church shooting. And it's like, I was like, I don't know if I'm being over cuck, but I was just like, I don't know. I don't even want those dots connected. Hilarious. <laughs> we could probably we could Hilarious. play it now that you set it up. You know, uh, I, you, you already you already like created deniability. You know, right. <laughs> Already. Also, by the time you know, by the time this goes out, the we'll all be over the church shooting. Do you, right. <laughs> oh yeah, the beat. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yo, yo, yeah, yo, yeah, yo, 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 bro, yeah, yo, yo, trees, leaves, roots. Leaves, <laughs> dirt, earth, pebbles, base, chick, 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 travel, rapping at you with my lips. I fucked your mama so hard, I sunk her titties, ships, Trafalgar, Waterloo, it was her end. I fucked your mama so hard, she made my penis bend. She's like a pussy prism. She made my dick contort and refract and reflect of the world's worst things. <laughs> I made your mama sing. She said, la 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 la, I love Dan's penis. I'm committed to your mom. I'm gonna take her to the prom, even though I'm 44 and she's 50. We thought that it would be nifty. It's not nostalgia. It's not the school we went to. Picking one at random and seeing what they do when a middle-aged couple walks in the door and pretends that it's their prom and gets on the dance floor. Will they police us? Will they try to stop the beat? I don't know. Let's find out. The truth is in the street. Obama and Trump need to go back to school. I'm just an angry rapper and I'm going. To- okay, goddammit, I can't do that. <laughs> All right, that was a good. That was a solid rap. <laughs> go into the prom, but I'm 44. <laughs> Wait, no, no. Even though, I'm sure we all, we're all lateral thinkers, but no one wants to hear from the rapper right now that says Obama and Trump need to go back to school, right? Like, we're just not, we don't, I was with you. It's too high resolution. Like, like, it's like, well, what, well, then who are you rooting for? I liked it because I was like, I, I got to see him justify this one. Because <laughs> they didn't learn the delegates. I, want, I just want to be, I want to be, who's the, who's the guy? I love the, I like the, I like the, like, not just the angry, it's not angry, like the gruff, the gruff rappers. Like, who's DMX. the guy? DMX. Yeah, like the, or the guys that are like, rawr, they like growl yeah, while they're DMX. rapping. Like, yeah. I want to be a growl rapper, but it, and the, but the reason I want to be is because is the same reason I can't because I think that <laughs> takes more. You need more science to drop that much science. I mean, you do have to know your rhyme pretty well to growl right. throughout. Um, <laughs> DMX was super good at it because he would just stop and. <laughs> 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 and he would start his shit off with like, get at me, Arr, I'm coming for you, Arr, turn on the lights, pull my pants down, Arr, no. and then would rap. And then Busta Rhymes, classic, yeah. oh, row, yeah. row, like a well, dungeon he would, he, dragon. He would, he would start, yeah. Yeah, he would get revved up like a little 70s like wind-up toy. <laughs> and then like, like uh, Go- Ghostface Killer, like, it was, uh, I think it was like above all my favorite because he would start like Slick Rick kind of like, yeah. he'd be like, I'm Ghostface Killer and I'm here to say, he doesn't have ever said that. <laughs> but he would like, but, but he would kill go, in a go, ghost go, face Ghostface way. Killer would like, like, like by the time he got to the end of a thing, I felt like, like I always imagined that he'd be going like this, like I do, because he'd be like, oh, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Yeah. Like yeah. he's like yelling, like shouting, like he can't, he can't, he can't fucking take it anymore. And then like, just like, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I would love to see people who aren't you doing the kicky baby dance. Yeah. <laughs> it would be amazing. I mean, it's amazing when you don't do it. It too. would be cool. It would, it, it would be, it would be helpful if, uh, if the hip hop community started, uh, 
adopting my 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 ways. I'm sure that's already happening. <laughs> I do want to go to like a, a just like a hut on a back road in Atlanta and find like just jet black Armenians doing your dance <laughs> and wrap and wrap it in your same pattern. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I told you, man, you can't talk about that, man. You're not depressed like damn, man. No, dude. Spit again. <laughs> you don't Spit again. <laughs> You're not on the spectrum. Right, right. I saw you shaking hands with people and hugging them and shit. You're not on the spectrum. <laughs> Yo, if you're gonna stim when you rap, it should be because you need to stim to get by. It shouldn't be because you like. It's like this is about what our culture. Is. <laughs> I'm not self-diagnosing. I don't know. My 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 uh, therapist keeps telling me I don't have autism. How you gonna be a Dan Harmon rapper and your DJ name is Strobe Light? <laughs> <laughs> you know you would have a seizure and freak out. <laughs> <laughs> That's so offensive. You're thinking of epileptics. It's like, I'm black, man. What y'all going to do, man? Epileptics. That's like, <laughs> Come at me, epileptics. Come at me. <laughs> I dare you, epileptics. <laughs> <laughs> calling autistic people epileptic is like calling uh, Samuel L. Jackson Lionel Richie. In that no one's going to write a letter? Is that how they're the same? Because the stakes are pretty low. <laughs> Did you ever see this YouTube clip of Sam Jackson is like doing press for some movie he's doing and then like the like morning show host like... Said, I think he he says something that makes it clear that he th- has confused him with I think Morgan Freeman or it's either Morgan Freeman or Wesley Snipes. Okay, it's one of those. But and then and then like I just I don't remember yeah. anything about it except just like awkward because it was just yeah. like it was just like the because it was like Jackson didn't let it go because wh- how could he? Right. You can't even even if he wanted to be a, a a team player he could like how are you supposed to bounce back from that right. after 1995 and like right. he, he's a, he was like. He's just like, no, we're going to talk about this now. And then, yeah. and then the morning show guy's like, okay, all right, come on now. <laughs> it's like, well, you literally dehumanized me. You yeah. confused me. It would be one thing. I mean, yes, uh, if you were a valet parker and you're like, oh, I forgot which one had the Porsche because same hair color. But like, you booked him on your show and you thought he did a different movie. That's we got to stop doing television now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have to stop and take a, a, a little time out here. Uh, Especially that, if you get your fame off of me. If the reason that you're famous is because you interview celebrities. Right, like what, I, right. what, what am I milking today? Well, right. you're milking this cow. Oh, well, right. I, <laughs> yeah, uh, how's it feeling being this cow? I'm not this cow, I'm that cow. Well, whatever. <laughs> Ted, come on. Let's not disrupt the farm. Milk is milk. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Ghostface would say. Uh, <laughs> milk, milk is milk. milk. Throw your hands up. No, no. Uh, can't, I, you, can't, you, can't, you can't riff an impression of Ghostface. You can, uh, you can do it if you go by casinos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it? What was, yeah, all right. I was trying to think of one of his rhymes. But uh, uh, did, what, did you see the Eminem thing, by the way? The, I did. Uh, I mean, everybody did. But, I did. Uh, I'm his, not going to give it the four stars that everybody else has given it, but right. I do appreciate the effort. Well, yeah. what, what's, I mean, every, I want to hear the detraction. It could have been better. It could have been better. It's offbeat. The, the rhyming, it's, uh, yeah, it's not clear. But don't you think he's what? What if he's what if he's are you, do, what if he's actually really making it up on the spot? What if he he did? He's out of practice. Yeah, it's not the old. Okay, so normally he'll do like a a a a a a a, a rhyme pattern where he's just rhyming word after word after word, mm-hmm. right? And he didn't do that. That's classic MM. He didn't do that. He did more of like a a yell speak spoken word poetry and when you're as lyrically talented and you can flow like he is like he can you sort of expect him it'd be like you know it, it'd be like it's like when Prince would come out and he would just do an acoustic set and you'd be like nah mm. <laughs> nah yeah but the combination I guess of like, cause like the stakes are so much higher because it's like like oh he's just oh he's saying I hate Trump and it's like that's like controversial which is a fucked up thing he's like two years late there's a lot of rappers that had already dissed Trump the, right out the gate so that was the other issue yeah but he know what I'm saying is that he knows the weight of the train he's driving to, to what to what station and what wall it's going to go through and whatever like you and I are talking about it I don't know about these other guys so yeah. he, he knows that he's whether whatever he thinks about himself I'm just saying like that would affect that would affect me too. Why am I arguing with you? I asked your opinion. I, I was, I, 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 it's I, your privilege. I, I was, I was, I, 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 I was just, uh, yeah. I was like, 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 why do we do that to people? We go like, like, well, what did you think? And then you go like, well, I didn't like it. And you're like, well, t- t- tell me why you didn't like it. And then they tell and you it, why. And you're like, well, I don't know about that though. I'd also like to say you didn't address the technical. That's, that's my only beef. Right. 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 Actually, truly, I wasn't really, th- there was, there was some rhymes in there where I was like, holy shit, that's pretty awesome. But truly, 
the reason why I did think it was awesome is because as a fragile white dude who loved Eminem and who is probably his age and who like just feels helpless and Eminem's got, you know, like it's like, well, (laughs) he's not a, he's not a role model and he's not nor even in hip hop or whatever. It was like, he, he reappears. And I always thought he was talented. I guess he, I feel like he's like the Quentin Tarantino of rapping or something. <laughs> like, no, he's like, pretty, he's I'm pretty like, high up there. I'm like always in he his corner. Props. I'm like, I wish people, I wish, I wish. And then, and then, and I was just happy to see him again. And he looked good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that beard. That beard was a little. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was like fervently yes. fucking like, anarchically political in his yes. messaging in a way that was just like straight up that that is I was the reason I was excited about it was because of all those things and he didn't fuck up and like right. like he didn't like say uh, north south east west a, a, a dog is your friend best I don't know why you got scared that he was gonna fuck up <laughs> I do well because he was freestyling right I mean uh uh-uh. uh he wasn't no well, now I hate it. No, no, I no. It's no, it still incredible. I it's thought he was incredible. freestyling. No, the, a freestyle. Well, then why uh, was he going? He can was I tell going you like, what's wait, fucked hold up? Hold on. Oh, hold it. Like, he was like, I got to start over. Here's, what's, here's the most fucked up thing is that our generation, freestyling is off the top of the dome. Younger kids think freestyling is when you don't have a musical track and you are, um, you're doing your song a cappella. So it, it's almost like, remember, remix used to be this is a new version of that song with the same lyrics. Mm-hmm. And now remix is just a longer version of a song or a different beat that isn't quite the same. You fucking so kids. Here's what of... freestyling used to be. Hit it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all about to be taken back to what freestyle used to be. Yeah. When people I, got confused in their rhymes. Peas and carrots, soups and plates. What? I tried to fuck your mama, but it's her I hate. I'm a hateful person and I hate your mom. So why did I fuck her? My name is Tom. Mr. Cruz is what they call me. I'd like to tell you about Scientology. You get your thetans clear, get them off your back, and then you give me $5,000 back. L. Ron Hubbard is the man to beat. I want to fuck your mama's titties. Going to put my dick in her feet. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I was, now I, that I, is off the, that's freestyle. Then I thought I'd throw it to you. But but, but now they're like, I'm going to do my song that you guys all know about, but I'm going to do it a cappella, so now I'm freestyling. Right. And there's also yeah, that's it. Well, I also really. heard a distinction. I was talking to Open Mike uh, about about the Eminem thing, and we were talking about freestyling and like what what is the I was talking about like what are the rules, like what's the religion surrounding freestyling? Like like when Eminem and the Slim Shady uh, uh, album, what the fuck was it? Where he's like he's freestyling and it's like 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 how much are you allowed to edit if you got busted editing would it be like a milli yes. vanilli scandal yes. you know you cannot edit if it's on your album it's like a freestyle track does it is it like a scandal if someone like leaks the thing and you're like taking 10 minutes and going wait uh, i should rhyme sugar with yeah. booger yeah that's not so, unjust but mike was saying uh that like for instance there's then there's another distinction where it's like rappers like jay-z will they pride themselves on not writing anything down, but they don't mean they're freestyling. They just mean they don't use pen and paper. They right. just like play themselves like an instrument. Like they'll and they'll they're like Pink Floyd about it. Like they'll they're just doing it in layers and passes and like going off the off their head, but they're refining it. There's people who are going off their head, and then there are people who have memorized freestyle rhymes. I, I imagine if you constantly freestyling, then you're gonna know mouth rhymes with South. Right. You know it's gonna happen. We all run through the A through the E the d work our way to the shuns t-i-o-n's and then we get we get freakier with that so everybody's going to be like i went today to see some pay and i went my way and then they're going to move on to it's easy to see to be me it's so easy to be he and then that's what i try to do so the complexity is always like can you do what eminem is super complex in that he goes a a a a Mm. for the whole first line which is bananas when he said, and that's hard to freestyle because you you need a dictionary, which you, so, you know. he also just thinks phonetically or something. That's what impresses me about like good like yeah. freestyles when people are like, oh, they don't even they like they like hear in sound. So it's like, I stole your mama's Acura, wrecked it, and sold it back to her. 
It's like that doesn't rhyme. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. like I would. It doesn't rhyme to me, but it rhy- It does when you say it. If you think also, in rhymes. Also, like kids nowadays don't rhyme anymore. So somebody, oh, yeah. will, somebody will say basket, and somebody will say kick it, and it's the <laughs> it that you were supposed you to be rhyming off. But what, back did you in the run day, out of your magic words. You got to you. You back in the day, you you had to rhyme. Words had to rhyme, and it couldn't be a party chant all of a sudden. Like just because you didn't rhyme, it couldn't suddenly become a hook. That's what happens when you strip language down. <laughs> You got rid of the word Eskimo. Now, how are you going to rhyme? Give me some mo. <laughs> Can't rhyme Inuit. You fucked yourself, millennial freestylers. Into it. <laughs> like, I never met an Inuit that wasn't into it. I never met an Inuit that wasn't into it. You co- okay. Uh, 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 so the, 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 it was an hour 20, and then I talked for what? Another fucking hour? 40 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Are we, so, so not to put you on the spot, but D and D or not? Well, we have fifteen minutes. Do you want to? Um, <laughs> not to put me on the spot. <laughs> um, it's totally up to you, though, because like, I, it's it, it, if if you if you don't feel like doing it, nobody's going to be like, I hate Spencer for not feeling like playing D and D for fifteen. Yeah, no one on minutes. Reddit would say anything like that, and well, no one would tweet <laughs> me about it either. <laughs> right now, there's a dude on Reddit pulling up his pants and wiping his boner away. <laughs> He's drafting a positive and a negative response. If we do it, he's mad. If we don't, two children mad. just got beat. <laughs> Dewey defeats so, Truman. I wasn't gonna hurt you until I found out no dandy. <laughs> Get over here! Stop drinking your dinner. Nine paragraphs on why they shouldn't have played D and D. It's like it's great. It's a lot of fun. We have a great fan base, and I enjoy them and appreciate their patronage. But if we if we if we wrapped up right now, we'd be we'd be fine. I wouldn't fine. hate that. I wouldn't hate trying. I uh, yeah. I just think that we. What happens? What has happened in the past? Should we throw? Well, it let's, the uh, let's let's let's. Uh, uh, if you if you want to if you want to leave it to me, and then you don't have to. You won't be sapped of your of your power because I can say Spencer had to me. I would play D and D, and here's why I would say it because we've done everything else that we usually do in this space tonight, and I mm-hmm. thought the fun experiment was doing it without an audience, so. If we then don't play a little D&D, I think that's a mistake. Right. Well. Like, I didn't want to do that awesome rap. That was, <laughs> I forced that. Yeah. Sometimes you put on the high heels, even though you're a feminist, you know? I feel like you asked me what I wanted to do, and when I was answering the question, you answered what you wanted to do. Yeah. Spencer, uh, he did the same thing to me. Yeah, yeah, why don't yeah. you guys go to a fucking Black Panther Matter rally? God damn it. <laughs> I just the what the problem that I perceive is that what happens is when we have a very drastically shortened session, right. no one remembers what happened and everyone forgets further about what happened in the session before that and then it becomes harder the next time we show up to actually but you know I, we could do it it's fine. <laughs> I just I I, I mean I just, like w- <laughs> I was uh, just moments ago. I was like re- ready to not play. Maybe right, we should, I know uh, that's what I kind of. Why don't was, we, but then I got the sense and like you're not going to accept this observation. This is me as guest comptroller, uh, and we love you, Jeff Davis. Please hurry back. Maybe we do a recap of last week and just do a couple opening lines. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Holy well, shit! As long as I get to sit down. <laughs> so let's bring up Steve Levy. <laughs> It's the Levy Show, Steve Levy Show. Who's Y'all clapping? Been waiting for him. It's the Levy Show. Pimp if you Levy the fire show. marshal is watching, if he hears the applause, he's gonna burst in with an axe. <laughs> it's the Levy Show. What's Straight up? Levy Show. How are you, Steve? I'm good. Any love life updates? Oh I guess, shit! I guess if there are, you can't say. So yeah, let's uh, let's check in later. Oh. Like, give me some time. Maybe there's things. Maybe not. Hmm. <laughs> give right. me a month or two. All right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That we all know what that Brandon means. Brandon knows. <laughs> yeah. You know what's up. <laughs> when somebody says give me a month or two, it, it, it yeah you you want some time. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the best place where you just have like an extreme crush and like. You just like someone else is in charge of whether you're happy or sad. That's yeah, great. <laughs> that's like what cavemen must have felt before they knew the sun wasn't a tortoise wheel. 
<laughs> also, it's like the littlest thing that they do that makes you so happy. Right. Uh, no, yeah. Like returning a text instead of letting it lay there like a fucking fart because you finally said something right. fucking weird and creepy. <laughs> right. And all your bullshit is like, <laughs> going to the ice cream museum. <laughs> going to the ice cream museum. <laughs> like, you should not be that happy about that. Like, and like, yeah. And like, like, yeah, any mention of a that favorite movie. Fun, and, like... <laughs> it is great. I'm not being sarcastic. Like, those are the moments. That's the and best it's part. Like, it, you're, it, it's like, it, 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 for me, it's never disingenuous. It's like that's like your body is flooded with that chemical. It doesn't make the love that 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 ends up happening later less genuine. But right. that's definitely a drug that yeah. you're on that is like amazing to be on. Where it's like another person is is just a god, yeah. uh, and you're and you're just struggling every day with like whether to overdo it, underdo it. Right. Uh, I'm just gonna fucking be me, man. I'm gonna fall in love. Yeah, like <laughs> constantly coming back to the realization you just gotta be yourself. If she doesn't right. like it, but it's like every every breath and every yeah, everything is a potential landmine. It's great. Where are we, Spencer Crittenden? It's a great question. Um, so do you want us to play the music? I don't think we have that capacity. Yeah, we do. Play the music. <laughs> Shit. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. Hell yeah. <laughs> Last time on Harmon Time, uh, you guys had gone back to the keep to turn in your mission, and you turned in the mission, and then uh, you decided to go get your pay for the mission. So you went to the commissary and got paid. Uh, as part of your debriefing, you had uh, left Patchens with the church and had agreed to meet up with him. So you went to the tavern to meet up with him but he didn't show up. So Diarrhea Jr. went to go look for him and he found him. And what did he find? Patchens was mad at our group and didn't want their help because they had caused problems for Patchens in the past and he just wanted to tell them that he was leaving. And leaving he did. But uh, the gang conspired or transpired. They, tr- they, they talked about what they should do. They were like, ah, you should probably see what's up. And then Jeff summoned a horse, and he fell off the horse because it disappeared and chased after Patchens. And he found Patchens and was like, wait right here. It was ambiguous whether or not you two were with him at the time. What will happen? Who will do? What will see? How will be? Harmon time. Now. Actually, now. All right. So, any any questions, yeah. uh, Brandon? You you don't have any clue, so all questions would be acceptable, I'd assume. Or if you have none, that makes sense too. Because what what questions could you have if you have no knowledge to begin with? But I'm just happy to be Jeff once. <laughs> You're getting better and better at those. That's they're yeah. very exciting, right? It's not like I was really good at it for a while and then completely stopped having to do it and lost practice. And I'm getting back into the group. I'm reaching new heights that I never achieved. I think you are. Right. That's what you said. Yeah. Well, if if we're not with Patchens, I assume, I, I kind of picture it as like, Jeff got on his phantom horse that he summoned, he rode for a burst, and then it it, just, it doesn't last that long. Yeah, and then but, he kind of sprinted off. And then he sprinted ahead of us, and he said, he said wait here to Patchens, and I assume like, uh, you know, we would be now, the rest of us, me and diarrhea would be coming up to where they are. If you want, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, let's. Uh, I'm gonna bring back some food. I left the guy where he's supposed to be. You guys come up to meet him. I'll bring back some snacks. <laughs> you're gonna. Chad's you're going gonna to go get, get some get snacks. snacks. Yeah. I love this plan. I'm into. <laughs> all right. Well, don't go. F- cut. All right. I, I, I mean, I don't want to. <laughs> Who doesn't like snacks? Well, I just we 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 haven't been all together yet so if you if you go off i'm just scared that we're going to get separated again do you coming right back i promise <laughs> you go okay do you want right. to get snacks nearby like perhaps within earshot i feel like we got the guy it's, everything's about to go down we're going to be hungry okay if <laughs> if we go anywhere we're going to follow the road in in the direction that patchens was heading so great uh, and if and, 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 and if we're not that means something's gone wrong in which case it would be important, more important to find us. So we're not with Patchens, but we, Carlos and I are running toward him, right, Spence? Well, you met up with Chad, who is getting snacks, let's say 50 feet from Patchens, who is told to wait there. So you're now approaching Patchens, and okay, great. Chad is presumably getting snacks, if Perfect. I understand. Patchens! 
<sighs> hey, guys. I heard you didn't want us to help you. Right. And here you are. Well, we owe you help. Yeah. I mean, that's probably true. I don't... I honestly feel like everything I've done with you has only put my life into jeopardy, and I don't... I'm worried that that would happen more with your help rather than, you know, it would be alleviated. I guess that's where I'm coming from. Patchens, what church do we belong to? The Church of the Silver Flame. What does flame do? Burns. What does burning feel like? Terrible. Is it good? Well, it depends on the context. Right. But you love your church. The, right. The, the, the silver flame is the flame of truth. Flame is a, a reaction between heat and things that it overtakes. The process can be damaging. It, it, it can be uh, helpful to things around it. It all depends on who's getting burnt and what use is getting gotten out of it. Um, the truth burns away at, at, at lies. Everything gets challenged. I failed you. Like, I, I, I came upon you and needed your help, and you helped us, and I owe you, and I know that I suck at it. Like, I've been holed up in the church, you know, looking for an opportunity to do something right instead of the bureaucratic bullshit they send us out on, and we encountered you, and I believe that the silver flame somehow made us, you know, intersect. And so I, I understand you not thinking that we're going to be good at it. Right. But we did try, and I've never betrayed you. I've just failed you. I've never lied to you. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the problem as I'm explaining it. Yeah, you're just saying why I shouldn't go along with you. Well, there's, a, there's, no, there's no control group to this experiment where you're doing awesome on your own, and I don't want to turn it into a we fight don't, like that. We don't know that that's the case. <laughs> I might be awesome. Hey, man, we, we, we love you. You've been there from the beginning. You're like our Scooby. Again, that's, never, that's not the question. The problem is not these guys don't love me enough. The problem is that their love is potentially lethal. But what if somebody owes you something? What if we owe you? Like, like Just because you don't want to accept our debt to you doesn't mean that we don't owe you. That's the problem. Do you have a uh, diplomacy? Uh, diplomacy. I do have it. The box is checked, but there's no there's number. No. Okay, then do you have charisma? I have like a 16 charisma. It says ability modifier plus three. All right. Your words touched him. He's like, you know what? I'm almost certain this will get me killed. But you can come if you want to join the adventure of Patchen's Gem. Yeah. We gotta. Well, we usually take a vote on party matters and uh, one. All right, fuck you. I'm leaving. No, no, no. I'm kidding. It was a joke. Can't leave without these snacks. Hey, everybody. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) it's Yeah. Oh, what man, kind of I'm snacks starving. did you get? I got a little jerky, and I got these beet chips. What kind enough. of jerky? Bison. So, yeah, bison, bison jerky. Okay. This is great. Yeah. This yeah. tastes really fresh. It's almost like it's a fine line between bison jerky and... Did you just come upon a bison? Actually, yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad that you are enjoying it. That's good. Yeah, this is great. Let us all eat from my snack bucket. <laughs> <laughs> You eat from the snack bucket. <laughs> that happens. You um, really nailed it, Chad. So, Patchens, before we help you, we're going to need to know more about this gem. Right. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a gem. Important people at the church told me to keep it safe, and they said my whole job was to keep it safe, and that was my whole job at the church, and it was a special position that was different than the normal hierarchy, <laughs> but that was it was an important position, and so they sent me to Roan, a quiet town, to lay low. And then it seemed like it wasn't so quiet anymore. So I'm tr- I tried to lay low some more, and then I got jacked. And I don't know who jacked it, but, you know, Roan is nearby the town of Dornester. And Dornester is a, is a, a town full of thieves and, and ruffians. And that's, we were right by it when I got attacked. We got attacked, I suppose. And uh, that's, that's where I was headed. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but... That's why I don't necessarily want to take people with me because I don't know that it'll do anything. But I got to do what I got to do. Otherwise, I'm going to get murdered. Well, the men that assailed us were hired hands for sure. They were disguised as banditos, but they were actually, you know, professional mercenaries. So it sounds like you're on the right track. What what did the gem do? 
Are we allowed to know that? What? What did the gem do? Yeah. It's a church treasure. He was just put in charge of keeping it hidden. Like, uh, yeah, it's but like it was like a, a, a Princess Leia or It doesn't a have Moses. any magical properties. It didn't anything? glow. It didn't do anything when I shook it. I don't. It's like a big gem. He doesn't know anything. They, they, they picked an obscure turd of a man and put him in the middle of nowhere where they thought yeah. that no one would ever find or look for the gem. And they were right. You and then we stumbled onto the, it and cr- fucked it up. Do you think the crazy vampire lady ha- has any connection to that It was to a totally gem? random thing. No, they weren't there for He was sleeping with the gem. Excuse me for a second, Patchens. This guy is a, you know, he wasn't doing anything. He was just sleeping. We had our dumb adventure that we half botched. And then we took him, told him he had to come with us to town and on the way there, we got robbed. Maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I think everything's connected here. I, you share that with, I mean, that's also schizophrenics and... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I, a, I'm well, owning I just, it. I just alienated one in 20 of our listeners. <laughs> I, it, 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 everything is connected, yes. but To the town past Rowan. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what someone who didn't think everything was connected would say. That's what we were just saying. Let's go. The the dot we're connecting is that the men that assailed us were, uh, they were they were they were hired. This is like a uh, somebody with the money to make other people do bad things, like hired a gang of people to disguise themselves and waylay us. I don't think they were affiliated with the vampires because the vampires weren't looking for Patchens or his gem. That was an unrelated story, uh, and 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 this is a new one. No one's touched my merballs. Are they too spicy? What is a merball? I set them next to the bison jerky. You, you didn't try them? I'll eat it. I worked really hard on these. I'm not going to eat it. You, you made it? Yeah. I said snacks, didn't I? <laughs> Patches, it- I'm going to tell you right now, if shit goes bad and you try the excuse of like we're bad at doing what we do again, you can, but... Not if you don't tell us everything you know right now. If you know more information than you've already shared with us about people who might be looking for that gem, you know, it's, it's going to be way less on us when we fuck up again. I truly don't know. I feel like my job was not to know for safety's sake. I got that impression, and I'm willing to believe you, yeah. I mean, it seems like they just buried this gem deep into the, in obscurity. They didn't want anyone to ever think about it. And you did a great job. That's why I feel like we owe you. Yeah, I feel like the church has these two different functions. There's like the function of 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 cooperating with the way the world already works, which isn't good, and then there's the function of purifying the world. And I feel like the people that put you in charge of that gym are, you know, they're more lateral. (laughs) They're more (laughs) punk rock. You know what? They are more punk rock. (laughs) (laughs) Who was it that put you in charge of that gym? Uh, Just some bishop. Schrader? No, no. And Filson? not that other guy. Avisman? I don't even know his name. He was such was a mysterious Roberts? character. Oh, it was Roberts. <laughs> um, the mysterious Roberts. All right, well, I pick up a merball to Patchens, onward, and then I take a bite of it, and it's it tastes really funky. It's kind of gooey Ooh. and warm in the middle. And I'm like, what... What did you? What did you want me to eat? What is this thing? Too salty. What is it? Too salty. I knew. I knew. I knew. Too salty. I'm so sorry. Ugh. I did the best I could. Is it meat? Is it a plant? That's the thing about myrrh. It's kind of meaty, planty. It's like seaweed. I eat. I eat a myrrh ball, and I let the dungeon master tell me how it tasted. Oh, it tastes like it might be too salty. I should probably. Uh, I should probably get some experience points for that. Yeah, that. you get some experience points because I didn't. You know what you did there? Oh. Kind of DM'd for yourself. Yeah, You're like, I don't want to critique it it Steve, bad, but he's a bit I... improv Yeah. Sorry. It's fine. I mean, we're Score. all just trying to do our thing, and it's great, but it's true. Cue music. Uh, 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 the the, uh, the Marching. Uh, 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 no, uh, what, 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 Tom, Tom, Tom Howard? Who's the, who's the uh, composer? The swelling music Terrence strings. Howard. No, no. Oh. Uh, the the Lord of the Rings guy, that uh, Howard Howard Shore. Cue Howard Shore as we don't literally cue Howard Shore. Oh, we'll get we'll be in big trouble. All as right. we as we as we as we, we journey off. 
as we do whatever Spencer says we're doing. You travel for, for a couple days and you reach a crossroads and you can see the way to Dornester and also a sign that points to Dornester. You hear uh, you hear more, not more. You can hear, we just do a quick, though, while we're, if we're walking that far, just like the audio of the dialogue rises and falls. We'll do a little montage of sound bites of stuff we're talking about while we're walking. Yes. So like, like balls. I just think that, you know, if, if Marching hot dogs music. are going to come eight in a package, why do buns come six in a package? Right. I, I, I guess it's because somebody might come over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. End of montage. <laughs> All right. Figured that one out. You travel for some time and you come to the crossroads. You see the sign marking Dornester uh, and you can see kind of down this hilly path of rolling hills. You can see Dornester kind of nestled next to a forest and, and you can also see what looks like a graveyard. Um, this is Dornester. Oh boy. You hear the sound of hoofbeats pounding as a horse rides up to you. And on that horse... I hope we're getting that. That's great. And on that horse is a familiar face. It's Geffen, that guy. He wears brown armor and stuff. Oh, boy. What up? Geffen! We see you again. This is crazy coincidence, huh? Yeah. Wow. What are you guys doing? Well, we... Snacks. Tell them about the snacks. We're on an... we're, We're headlong into an operation in which... Who we tell what matters more than before. He points to his his temple a couple times and he winks. He's like, I got you. Well, I'm just out on rounds. See, we're checking with affiliate churches to see how everyone's doing. The nearby town of Dornester has been pretty fucked up. We believe they're all on pot or something. Hmm. Well, so you're going there to to do what? Like crack some heads? Yeah, they're a rough and rowdy bunch. We don't try to force abstinence on the public, but if our congregants are getting fucking zooted out of their skulls, I'm going to crack some of their skulls. Zooted. (coughs) So they're specifically having a lot of sex? No, they're getting lifted, shifted higher than the ceiling, bro. Fucking zooted out of their skulls. God damn. Talking that sneaky weaky, that sticky icky, you know what I'm saying? Higher That's what we a, think. Higher than a hawk's nuts? Uh, if rumors are to be believed. <laughs> higher than a giraffe's pussy. I'd have to confirm. Yeah, absolutely. This is the man we've been waiting to hear from. <laughs> well, it looks like you'll get there before us, but Geffen, if, if, I, if I could have a word with you, there may be some way you could help us. Okay. Just keep your ears peeled for um, anybody who may have hired a gang of uh, brigands uh, to uh, uh, go out and do bad things on the road. We- right. I'm on it. Okay. Well, that's- Away! You have a beautiful horse! Yep. Well, it's always good to get, Geffen will get there first. He sure did. It's nice. Or will. All right. That's not a compelling cliffhanger, but that's that's a good time to stop, right? <laughs> well, one man's non-compelling cliffhanger is another man's perfect denouement. I look, I see a dandelion, and uh, and I say, "Look, gentlemen, huh. the dandelion. It grows its whole life just to give way to chaos, in hopes that its life wasn't spent in vain." The three of us. Proceed forth from here to the wind and wherever it takes us. But we'll always be together through purpose, like the roots of the dandelion. To brotherhood. To the fellowship of Patchen's gem. <laughs> to the fellowship of Patchen's gem. To the fellowship of Patchen's gem. We shouldn't make that our public name. <laughs> but to the fellowship of Patchen's gem. Yeah, no, we won't say it to anybody else. Yeah, because yeah, right. it's, 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 it's a secret. It's sort yeah. of a respite. It's great. Right. right, and it's it. a little gay, but but that's... <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm i sure a thousand years from now that'll be... Uh, what I said will be uh, bad. Cliffhanger! <laughs> it doesn't work to just yell things without an audience, nope. does it? Because, yeah, we can't... Oh. Oh, yeah, no, play, yeah. The, go- play the gospel version because we teed it up. Harm in town, starting oh. all the time. Harm Except now. 
is a podcast you can listen to no matter who you are. Harmontown, the podcast starting now is the time. Harmontown, Ladies and gentlemen, that's been Harmontown. Thanks so much for listening. Harmontown. Damn. I've been Brandon Johnson in for Jeff Davis, Spencer Crittenton, Dan Harmon, Steve Levy. Zach and Chris, thank you so much. Shout out to Sarah. Oh, shit. Nolan. We'll see you next week. God love you. Yeah. Thank you.